Did you see that fight on the river? I heard about it. You heard about it? Oh, man, I heard about that fight on the river. Oh, no. Oh, this is so... This might be the worst. This might even be worse than the knife thing. Yeah, what the hell? They're shouting at him, walk away, walk away. Multiple people say at this point, apparently, he hit the girl. And then once he hits the girl, a couple boys come forward. I think three, they shove him away from the girl. Disagree with what? Just like everything? I didn't even hear that before. This guy is, this guy's actually super trying to de-escalate. The guy who broke up the fight was stabbed twice. Wait, isn't that this guy right here? Isn't this the guy that's trying to break up the fight? Do you think he's gonna bring up any of the lies that Nikolai told? A single one? Let's find out, let's see. This is the, the clearest possible evidence that the people Mu confronted decided long after the fact. What? This is, he's not even part of the, I bet he, I just realized, he does, this guy, he, he hasn't actually watched anything of this case. Camera recording started. What's going Temperature? on? Temperature? Temperature's okay in here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Somebody, uh, I hear somebody got stabbed. Uh, and I fit the description. I hear somebody got stabbed and I fit the description. Oh man. Oh man. Yes, you do. All right. Yep. So we're working through that now. Did you see that fight on the river? I heard about it. You heard about it? Oh man, I heard about that fight on the river. Oh no. This is why you don't talk to the cops. Oh no, he should have invoked his fifth. I don't want to say shit to you, I want a lawyer. He shouldn't have said anything here. Yep, so we're working through that now. Did you see that fight on the river? I heard about it. You heard about it? Yeah, and I've seen people gather around it. Okay, all right. And I oh, this is so, this might be the worst. This might even be worse than the knife thing. I went over to talk to see if somebody saw anything, but that's about it. Okay. Our whole group was pretty uh, interested in finding out what happened. Okay. And that's your whole group over there? Yeah, yeah. He must not be, okay, so when somebody said earlier, why would he walk up and start the fights with phones? He's, just not, he's not thinking about the phones at all or something. Oh, man. Okay. All right. So I don't know. Okay, well. Did you see anybody injured? No. Did you didn't see anybody injured? No. Did you see anybody fighting? I, I heard people screaming at each other, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. It's like, the thing is, is that like, if you truly thought you were defending yourself, you truly thought your life was in danger, this is like, so, it's so much guilty conscious. Oh my God, it's so much guilty conscious here. Screaming in anger or screaming in pain, do you know? Everybody's drunk, so I don't know, I can't tell the difference, but I would say, I don't know, just screaming. Okay. You know? Yeah, calling each other names, but, you know, that's, we've seen that all day. And we've all been drinking a lot. I'm sure they're drunk. I'm sure they're doing, I don't know. Okay. Kids being kids. Kids being kids. Where, where are you, where's your group from? Where did you drive from today? Oh, I drove from, uh, um, Prior Lake. From Prior Lake. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I didn't drive What even is the point of lying here? Maybe he thinks that they weren't recording or it's on their phones. He's hoping they weren't recording or something, maybe? I don't know. Your wife and you? Yeah. And you met the group here? Uh, yeah, but we know each other. Okay. All right. As long as the temperature is good, I'll check back with you in a minute, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Do you think he could have possibly just panicked when he tossed it? I think there's an argument to be made that you could panic toss the weapon, but walking over to the other side of the riverbank, possibly cleaning it off and then tossing it, is a, it's different, that's so much different. I don't remember that conversation. Oh, uh, also, I'm talking a little bit of shit here, I don't know 100%, but like, for an affirmative defense, you probably have to take the stand and you've got to say, okay, well, hold on now. I know that I'm testifying kind of against myself, but I'm trying to explain why I believe the things I did at the time, what I felt at the time, how I knew that this was like um, self-defense and, and I feel for my life. I feel like it's hard to sell to a jury. Um, I feel like it's hard to sell to a jury or it's harder at least, that you had your understanding of your state of mind and everything going on at this time, but then you forgot everything else that's incriminating. I feel like that's a rough one as well. But yes, I don't remember that conversation. But yes, 
you, 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 I, in fact, you told him that you heard there was a stabbing, right? I don't remember any of this stuff. You're fishing for information about what happened, right? That white, you can't object to that as like leading or argumentative or anything like that, where he's like inserting like a state of mind for what he's doing. That's, you're allowed to do that? I don't know what the, we should look at the rules of objections or whatever for. Was a stabbing, right? I don't remember any of this stuff. You're fishing for information about what happened, right? The prosecutor can ask leading questions. Oh, you're just not allowed to do it on a cross-examination? Oh, because if you're the defense, you're cross-examining your own per Would you ever, would the defense ever cross-examine themselves? Would you ever do that? Is that even possible? Yes, okay, all right. You could say I was fish. I, I don't know. I you know. asked him some questions. If you're representing yourself like pro se, how can you, how can you, can you ask yourself questions? <laughs> if they put you on the stand and then can you be like, how does that work? You have to swear in for every question. How do I, cr oh, the perfect, here it is. How do I cross-examine myself if I am pro se, but also a witness? Um, pro se means you're representing yourself without a representation, without a lawyer. When a party is presenting his or her own evidence through friendly witnesses, it's called direct examination. The opposing party then conducts cross-examination of that witness. In other words, your question used the wrong terminology. That's okay with me. Lay people mix this up a lot, and no one should make fun of anyone for not using the right lingo. Damn, he just roasts this guy right out of the gate. <laughs> Um, which gets me to the question you intended to ask. Oh, wait, hold on. When a party is presenting his or her own evidence through friendly witnesses, it's called direct examination. The opposing party then conducts cross-examination. If you're the witness against yourself in a case, I don't even know how this works. I don't need a criminal lawyer. I'm not sure. Because you're, you're, like, you're testifying against yourself, kind of, if you're doing an affirmative defense, right? I don't know. Which gets me to the question you tend to ask. Are you supposed to ask yourself questions, give one long statement? Obviously, it would be best if you had an attorney to ask these questions and you could give the answer. If that's not possible, your question is a good one. I've only had a few cases against people who had no attorney. In those cases, the judge just swore them in and let them give one long statement, and then I conducted cross-examination. However, I don't know if all judges do it that way. If you have any hearings prior to the trial, you can ask judge for clarification. Oh, okay, weird. Huh. Again, I don't remember this conversation. But you were pretending that you didn't know what happened. Is that true? No. How brutal can these get? Because he just said he didn't remember, but now he's saying he knows that he wasn't lying. Can you do? Can you have both of those things at the same time? Does he get pressed on this? But you were pretending that you didn't know what happened. Is that true? No. At the point that you're talking to Sheriff Knudsen and saying these things, you didn't know there was a video of what happened on the river, did you? I didn't know whether I was dead or alive at that point. But you also didn't know that, you, that there was a video, right? No. Oof. When the sheriff asked you what had happened, one of your responses was it was kids being kids, right? Oof. I don't remember any of that Oof. conversation. Points to state of mind at the time, right? Just kids being kids? What about like, I thought they were, I thought it was like lethal situations where you feel for your life, right? You just heard yourself say it on the video though. So. Objection, no foundation. I'll move on. Um, uh, prior to being taken to jail, you were transferred from that squad car that you were into a different squad car, right? Remember that? You remember at some point uh, Deputy Thomason telling you that you were under arrest for homicide and attempted homicide? I don't remember any don't of that. 
Could you just take the stand and answer everything with I don't know? Well, but then you just wouldn't take the stand. But remember, the challenge here is that he is he for sure killed somebody. He for sure attacked people. So it's not enough for him to deny that ever happened because he would lose 100%. Now he has to try to explain why he did something that ordinarily would be illegal, right? That's why it's an affirmative defense. He has to be able to explain he did do something and we all saw it and normally this would be illegal, but I'm going to tell you why it's not illegal. I'm going to tell you why I didn't have the, the criminal state of mind when I did these acts. So it's so he has to take the stand. So it's kind of weird, right? Because ordinarily in a case where you're being accused of a crime, you don't want to take the stand and testify, except for an, an exceptional case. You don't have to testify. You don't have to testify against yourself in court. Um, but here he kind of has to because he's saying, okay, I did it, but there's a reason why, right? When you spoke with Lieutenant Hart, um even though you'd been informed that you were being arrested? Sorry, oh, so I kind of just answered, because I see questions in YouTube chat now. Um, why even answer? Can't you invoke the fifth, or can the judge compel you to answer? I don't think that once you've agreed to take the stand, I don't think you can invoke the fifth anymore, right? Where's where's my lawyer? That'd be kind of weird. Maybe you can, but I don't, but I mean, it's kind of, I think it would look horrible. It would be, I, if you did that, I think you're like instantaneously losing your case. I, even if you could do that, it would be the dumbest thing in the world. Right. Like, oh, like, I'm going to take the stand. I'll, tell, I'll show you guys that this wasn't my fault. And the guy's like, all right, well, so did you kill the person? I plead the fifth. OK, well, how did you feel? I plead the fifth. It's like, wait, why the fuck are you here? You're not going to testify. Or are you, would it be self-incriminating for you to say what? It would just be so I feel like it would be so dumb. But I don't know. For homicide, you pretended to know that to not be aware that someone had died. Right. Right? When you were talking to Lieutenant Hart, you... Over here at the jail? Yeah. I don't remember any of that conversation. You don't recall pretending to not be aware that someone had died? Objection assumes a fact. Sustained. Uh, when you're talking to Lieutenant Hart, that was about four... Can you plead the fifth if you agree to testify, let's check. Witnesses can plead the fifth, can call those right. Yeah, but I feel like this is it for other crimes. Could you plead the fifth in your own case? You can't, no, you can't do this. There's no shot you can do this. You're right, that's a good, con I know you can't do this. And the, you know why you can't do it? Why there's no way you could do this? Imagine if you agree to testify. Imagine you take the stand Imagine your lawyer asks you a bunch of questions and then on cross, you just plead the fifth on every single question to avoid every cross examination. No shot. There's no way you'd be allowed to do that. You, there's no way. There's just no possible way. If you agree to testify about this particular matter, there's no way that you could just plead the fifth when you don't want to answer a question. No? The defense goes second? Well, I think it's whoever is, it's not your witness, you go second, right? I think it's, if it's within the scope of the question asked, he would have to answer on cross-exam. Huh, okay, huh. Four hours after you'd been arrested. Wait, here's a better explanation. Oh, you're fucking retired. Right? Look at that Shkreli video saying he did it repeatedly. Did, was the Shkreli court thing, was that trial televised? Because when Shkreli was pleading the fifth, that was in front of like a congressional thing. That's what I remember hearing. I don't remember him actually, I, but I don't know if, we, if that court case was public or not. That was about four hours after you'd been arrested, right? Yeah, that's what I learned. And said you had time to put together a story, right? No. Overall. You had four hours to come up with a story about what happened on the river before you were interviewed by Lieutenant Hart, right? No. You didn't have that time. I didn't put a story together. Okay. So when you told her things like, two of these boys pulled knives on me, you're telling the truth? No. That was a story, right? Correct. Let me read, hold on. The story about what happened on the river before you were interviewed by Lieutenant Hart, right? No. You didn't have that time. I didn't put a story together. Okay. So when you told her things like, two of these boys pulled knives on me, you're telling the truth? No. That was a story, right? Correct. And when you said that you somehow managed to Grab one of the boys. Damn, wait. So on witnesses, did he tell somebody that boys pulled knives on me and then afterwards tell the cops that he had no idea what happened? Oh, it's like so inconsistent, so bad. 
Oh my God. Okay. So when you told her things like, two of these boys pulled knives on me, you're telling the truth? No. That, that was a story, right? Correct. And when you said that you somehow managed to grab one of the boys' arms and bend their wrist back and stab them with their own knife, that's a story you made up, right? I told her what I remembered. You remember doing that? No, I, everything I told her is what I remembered at that time. At the time you told her these things, you, you thought that you would grab someone's arm and stab them with their own knife? As you can see, I was very confused. Did you not testify earlier that you lied about the knife? That I, I, I did. And that nobody, nobody else had a knife on the river except for you? That I lied about the knife. So it's impossible then for you to have twisted someone's arm and stabbed them with their own knife, right? I saw the video. No, I'm asking what you said it's, to Lieutenant Hart. I don't remember the interview, but I saw the video. And so you're aware. And I, I, I know that it's not right. It, it's not true. Not just a couple of little lies, but lie on top of lie to Lieutenant Hart, Jackson, right? Argumentative. Sustained. Well, let's talk about some of the things you told her. You said, these boys took these, the goggles off my head and threw them down the river, right? You told her that? If that's what the video recorded, yes. All right, you told them, you told her that these boys tried to pull down your shorts, right? <laughs> that's what I saw in the video. <laughs> the counter, the counter pedo argument, well, I wouldn't be pedophile, it would just be, oh no. If that's what the video recorded, yes. All right, you told them, you told her that these boys tried to pull down your shorts, right? That's what I saw in the video, but I don't remember the interview. That's a detail you added for your benefit, right? No. You said these boys attacked you, right? You told her that multiple times, right? I saw the video. Did you say that or not? Yes or I no? said that in the video. Yes. And, and you knew that wasn't true, right? So, in the video, I lied, I, I totally lied about the, 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 the knife. Um, I, I, I didn't remember a lot of details. I didn't remember a, of anything. I don't even remember the interview. I just, oh, man. looking at the video, it's, it's, I can look at it like anybody would look at it for the first time. I don't remember any of that. You told Lieutenant Hart that these boys told you, don't run away from us. You remember saying that? Oh, do you, oh wait, hold on. No foundation. Overruled. Oh, no. overruled. Oh. In fact, it's just the opposite. They were telling you to go, right? I don't remember. You told her that a second boy had a knife, attacked you with the knife, and you took that from him, right? I feel like one of the big problems, obviously, is why you don't usually testify against yourself, but like to bring up, wit I don't know how much this impacts the jury, but to bring up a witness and to examine them, direct exam, cross-exam, and do this to establish that like, oh, well, he told, he told different stories to different people. I feel like to do that witness after witness after witness is one thing, but to be able to put the actual defendant on the stand and go through boom, 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 all the different stories and inconsistencies you told, oh my God, it's so brutal. I, I, you would hope that like this type of presentation is something that you only get in your like, uh, what do you call it? Your final statement to the um, jury before they go and deliberate? What's that called? The closing statements, I think, or your closing argument or whatever? You'd hope you only see it there, but damn, this is brutal. That's what I saw in the video. That's not true either, right? Right? Uh, That's not true. Feels like they didn't prep him at all. I mean, you can't you can't like rehearse or super prep a, a witness. But also, the problem is that like you have strategy. Re really, again, it's like a debate. You've got your facts and you've got your rhetorical maneuvering. But this guy fucked up legitimately, really hard in a lot of ways. There's only so much you can do. Like he's on video stabbing like six people, bro, in a fucking river. Like, and then he deliberately tosses the weapon afterwards and tells six different stories to 12 different people and is on camera and he's like, like this is almost impossible. This is like an impossibly 
fucked. Like, you're so fucked. You're so fucked. Videos, multiple witnesses, dead person, murder weapon. Like, you're fucked. Like, five ways of Sunday. You're completely fucked here. He seems to be refuting his state of mind for self-defense, but I'm not sure if the burden is on him to prove self-defense or the state to disprove it from reading the statute. I believe that in Wisconsin, I think they just have to have a um, uh, uh, preponderance of evidence, balance like 51% to prove self-defense. But yeah, the, the issue here isn't even the factual disagreements, the fact that he's lying or whatever. The issue is that like, oh, I'm glad this is coming out in court too. I just wish all debates were in court because I hate my own audience on this. You guys say things where you'll be like, oh, this person was confused at this point in time. So anything can happen. That's not true. There is no such thing as a state of mind that generates random activity, unless you're experiencing psychosis or on a drug or something. And even at that, it's questionable, right? There's very few of any states of mind that, do, that actually generate total random activity. Different states of mind can generate different types of actions. And he's trying to sell the point, like, again, it's, the, it's like when I was arguing on the Daisy shit with ABBA or whatever. Like, I can understand we can say that the girl's like this, but this state of mind can't explain both actions. You, you have to have a consistent story here. The, the same state of mind doesn't generate both actions. Mine does, right? That's the argument that I at least would go on. The problem is here, if he felt like he was in fear of his life, and he did, Jesus, fuck. If he felt like he was in fear of his life and he didn't know what was going on, and um, he, he, he just had no idea... Uh, of anything, he was forgetting anything, then sure, that's fine. Like, you can do that story. But then, why are you walking around telling different things to different people that are all in your favor, right? That seems very intentional. When you're telling people stories, and that's why the guy's asking, that he, that's why the, um, that's why the uh, attorney said, that helps you, doesn't it? That helps your story, doesn't it? When you said the boy pulled your pants down, right? When you said the boys had the knives, that helps your story. Because you can say like, oh, well, he was confused and scared and in self-defense, but why is it that every single mistake he's made has erred in his favor? It seems less likely at that point that we're just, we're feeling really distraught and we're generating things from a distraught, uh, scared mind. Seems like we're actually intentionally trying to cover up a crime or cover up something that we knew was wrong. We knew at this point that we did something incredibly morally abhorrent. That's why we hid the knife at the other end of the river. We didn't just drop it. That's why we told the cops we heard something happened, but we don't know what it was. We even tried to guess what it was, knowing that we already knew the answer. That's why we told different stories to different people. That's why we put our hat and our glasses on afterwards. All of these facts don't demonstrate a state of mind of a man who was genuinely fearful for his life and was just like kind of rattled after the event. It seemed like a guy who was more intentionally active and then after the event knew that he did something wrong and was trying to cover his tracks. That's what it seems like given all, all these stories afterwards. And then again, you're putting him on the stand and now you can go through lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. It's not like here's a jury in an hour and then here's another jury for two, or, or, or here's a witness for an hour, here's another witness for an hour and a direct and cross. It's just the defendant, boom, 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 boom. And it's, yeah. It's not, I'm not, when I put this out again, I'm not trying to make the argument that like, oh, it's because the attorney is like such a good mind fuck debater and he's fucking this guy over. It's because his story is probably bullshit. And to sell this type of lie here on the stand when so much witness testimony has been entered and so much contradictory information for, that you've done is already out there on the record, like you're fucked at this point. You said that when you walked back to your group, and this is talking to Lieutenant Hart, that Ernesto asked you if you had found the phone, right? <laughs> you remember I, saying that to her? I don't remember any of that conversation but, I had with her. Yeah, that wasn't true either, right? If this is all part of that interview, I don't remember anything, yeah. so. That's what we're talking about. We're talking right. about the interview with Lieutenant Hart. Then I don't remember the interview. Okay, I still get to ask you questions about sure. it. You were specifically asked, did you have a knife, right? Do you remember being asked that? I don't remember that, but I know I was. Your really... answer to Lieutenant Hart was no, no, absolutely no, right? Oh, right. no! Which? Really? Was that in this video? <laughs> I haven't watched this one yet. Does it 56? Are they referring to this interview? Let 
Remember, denying something is not the same as not answering something. In, in our layman sense, it might feel the same. If you're, you know, if a mom asks you, did you do your homework and you don't answer, it's kind of the same as saying like, no, I didn't. That might be true in a layman sense, but in court, like answers and everything are, ooh, him not saying shit here would have been so much better for him than that answer. Oh my God. Okay, sorry, hold on. Did he say that in this? I don't even know if this is the one that comes from. Absolutely. Okay, maybe he didn't say it here. I haven't seen this yet, please watch. This is an hour, okay. I lied, I know I lied about the knife. Oh. You said to her, why did they want to scare me with a knife, right? Mm. Talking about the boys, I mean, the 17 year olds. When none of them ever had a knife, right? Is that right? Apparently not. <laughs> oh no. He said I grabbed it, meaning the knife, from him because he tried to poke me with it. Do you remember saying that? Nope. You said a woman hits you in the ear. Do you remember saying that? Nope. You know that's not true, right? Objection, foundation. Ooh. You know that's not true as you sit here now, right? Right. You told the cop, the police, and Lieutenant Hart, I think, that you thought it was two different groups of people fighting against each other, right? I don't remember telling her that. I'm still sitting here offering the exact you know, same bet I did before. I what do you want to... It's a jury trial. Anything can happen. What? My confidence here isn't about whether or not he'll be convicted or not. It's just that he's, his story sounds really fucking bad because he probably really murdered those fucking that kid and stabbed the other people without a good reason to do so. You could still get acquitted. They might still say not guilty. Um, what are we betting on? I'll bet you a hundred bucks that he gets convicted of some sort of. He's getting convicted of something. There's no way that he walks completely. I need to read the statute to see if you can like self defense fuck your way into like manslaughter or something. But um. If my understanding of the of the statutes is correct, it's probably at least second degree murder. That'd be my guess based on what I've seen so far. But maybe they've got like, but can't you have, isn't there another charge for like voluntary manslaughter? I don't know the difference between voluntary manslaughter and like second degree murder. The state of Florida, a voluntary manslaughter charge can be brought forward by the prosecutor when homicide doesn't fit a murder charge's legal description, instead showing that the homicide, although intentional, was committed during the core of an act of provocation, or possibly during a moment... Stalk me, what was my bet? I'm still willing to offer you the same bet about him not getting convicted for attempted murder on the orange shorts, dude. Um, man, I mean, like, I want to take it. I just have to go through and look at all that. Was, was the orange short guy the one that you put the knife in and stabbed and slashed up or whatever? <clears throat> um... My guess is going to be, let's see, if he gets if he gets convicted on one count, he's probably getting convicted on. Was the, was the shorts guy the first kid that he hit? Was that the one who reached and choked him or whatever? Or reached and put his hands on his neck, I should say. He, that might be the only one he walks on, maybe. I think he said before his hands were on his neck. Is that true? If you yeah, if you want, I'll bet. I don't. Even, I don't know the even the particular stat. What is he? What is he being? What are this guy's charges even? Hold on. Apple River shooting or stabbing charges. <clears throat> okay, he stabbed five people and killed one. Oh, five. I'll bet. Yeah, sure. We can do hundred bucks. One to one. Knock us about. Just to make it. Just to make it exciting for you. Okay. See her today. But that is complete, completely made up, right? Again, I don't remember any of that that you're talking about right now. If it's told, about the interview, you told Lieutenant Hart that you wanted to stay in the area and you know watch the police come in and arrest these people for fighting, right? He what? To arrest these people. I don't remember any of that? 
that you're talking about right now, if it's told, about the interview. You told Lieutenant Hart that you wanted to stay in the area and you know, watch the police come in and arrest these people for fighting, right? Hmm. That's what you told Lieutenant Hart? That's what's in the transcript, yes. When you were told that a person had died, your response was, is it because they fought each other? <laughs> oh no. Okay, what is this? If I'm a child molester, should you be drinking? The only thing I remember is in my mind is if I'm a child molester, should you the only thing I remember is in my mind is if I'm a child molester, should you be drinking? What? How does he remember that? What? Okay. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Maybe we'll watch this later. I don't know. That's what you told her, right? That's how you responded? If it's in the transcript. But I don't remember. You, you never told Lieutenant Hart that you, that you punched or pushed or did anything to Maddie Cohen, right? You left that part out? Is that what it's in there? The I'm asking <laughs> if you ever told her that. I don't remember. You didn't mention that you had stabbed and severely injured another woman, uh, Riley Madison. You didn't mention that to Lieutenant Hart, right? Objection form. Overruled. <clears throat> you never mentioned that part. I don't remember. You didn't mention uh, being strangled at, at any point, right? If that's the, the transcript, then that we go by that, but I don't remember that interview. And I think what you said earlier is that you were afraid you were going to die from being strangled, and that's why you... <clears throat> why do you look at Nicola's state of mind in a retrospective manner? I'm not. You don't understand what that word means, or you don't understand any of the words that I've said, or you don't understand what's going on in this court case. I don't think that you're so irrational. You were able to type, you've got in access to the internet, you're watching a stream right now, and you're engaging with the content. So I think you've got the faculty in your brain to process the words, the concepts, the statements for the sentence you've typed. So you're either so far lost ideologically down this that you can't compute anything because you're all your logical thought processes are being hijacked, or that, that must be what's happening. We're not looking at his state of mind retrospectively. We're looking at his state of mind prospectively. We're saying, if you were in fear of your life, why is it that then afterwards you told different stories about what happened that all made you look good and all made them look bad? Why did you ditch the murder weapon in a, in a really guilty fucking way? You didn't just drop it. You wouldn't. You hit it. Why did you lie to the cops in a way that made it seem like you were innocent and they were guilty? That's a prospective analysis. We're not going retrospectively and saying like, oh, well, um, <clears throat> if you were so scared, um, you know, why, why did you only kill one instead of five or whatever? I don't know how the fuck you could know who he's going to kill or why. Like we're not, we're looking at it at the state of the, at the point in time, like what was happening? What, what were the decisions that he was making supposedly with his scared state of mind? Fear affects people differently. Shut the fuck up. You fucking retard. Get the fuck out of here. I can't believe you guys think this. I'll say this one more time. I'm never going to repeat this. I, I feel like this might be a thought I might have to purge for my community hard. Like we just start banning for this. You cannot say a certain state of mind causes you to exhibit chaotic or random, truly random behavior. That is, there's no such thing as a state of mind that causes human randomness. That's not true. Different states of mind make you, are, are, make you more preclusive to doing certain types of things, but not random things. That's not, that's not how minds work. If you're scared, let's say somebody says, holy shit, I was, I was so scared I was barely even thinking. And it's like, oh, okay, what did you do when you were so scared that you weren't even thinking? Well, I placed a phone call to the police officers. I was very quiet and I hid around the corner um, and I crouched just like I remember seeing in a YouTube video a year or two ago about how to survive a bank shooting. Um, I used Morse code to signal to the teller uh, about this or that particular thing. Um, I remember that it was 12 o'clock, so I had to take my medication. I went ahead and I popped that real quick and blah, blah, blah. Like, you can't, and I go, hold on, this doesn't seem like you're incredibly scared or, or whatever. It seems like you're pretty calm and collected. You can't go, ah, uh, excuse me, scared people can do a lot of different things, sir. No, you fucking retard. That's not true. The fact that you're giving a state of mind to explain some actions means that you're giving a state of mind that makes you more likely to do other actions rather than actions you ordinarily do. So no, saying somebody's scared doesn't mean anything is possible. Clear is that you were afraid you were going to die from being strangled and that's why you stabbed Isaac Schumann in the heart. Right? That was your testimony early, earlier? Didn't you say that today, this afternoon, here in court? Yes. 
That's not anything you mentioned to any police officer. Wait, right? what did I mention? And right, that was your testimony. Destiny is giving the state of mind of a rational person, not someone who is in a state of fear. This, his actions were the actions of a rational actor. Do you understand that? Do you understand that nothing he's done is irrational? He's, after the altercation, he walked to the other side of the river and he ditched the murder weapon. Then he walked back to his friends and he sat in the inner tube. Then he put on a hat and glasses so that he didn't look like he matched the description of the cops. Then he told his friends, oh, I don't know what happened. Uh, these guys tried to pull my pants down or these kids had a knife. Then when he was asked by the cops, he said, it wasn't my weapon. I didn't have it at all. Then when they asked him what happened, he said, oh, I don't know. I heard somebody got stabbed. Then when they said things that were going on, he was like, oh, did the two boys stab each other when they were fighting? None of these actions are random. Every single one of these actions serves to bolster the claim that he wasn't involved whatsoever. None of these actions are the actions of a fearful person. They're, all of these actions can be explained by the state of mind of, I did a big oopsies, and I'm trying really hard to get away from it. Every single one of those actions can be explained by that state of mind. Every single one. To say, oh, well, he was scared, so maybe he just happened to accidentally do every single thing an incredibly guilty person would do, that's f***ing retarded. I have a bridge to sell you. Over, uh, there's a saying there. Okay, video game. Twenty early, earlier? <clears throat> Didn't you say that today, this afternoon, here in court? Yes. That's not anything you mentioned to any police officer, right? If Just, I didn't mention, I didn't mention it. I don't remember that. That's, that's not an important detail that you thought you might want to point out. Objection argument. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 what was this question? Fine. Yes. That's not anything you mentioned. Yeah. You strangled, and that's why you. Transcript, and that we go by that, but I don't remember that Amazing. interview. And I think what you said earlier is that you were afraid you were going to die from being strangled, and that's why you stabbed Isaac Schumann in the heart. Right? That was your testimony early, earlier? Is this the one that Gisticle's defending? Didn't you say that today, this afternoon, here in court? Yes. That's not anything you mentioned to any police officer, right? Oh, yeah. If Just, I didn't mention, I didn't mention it. I don't remember that. That's, that's not an important detail. <laughs> this guy's he might want to point out. Objection argument. <laughs> Everything is a, every detail is important. We all know that. But I don't remember saying any of those things to Lieutenant Hart. Because you didn't say them, right? That's why you don't remember. Because what? You didn't say those things to her. That's why you don't remember, correct? I, I don't remember what I said or what I didn't say to her. I don't remember even having an interview with her. So you can't remember anything about what you told her but when Mr. Nelson's asking you questions, you can remember all these feelings you had at the time. Yep. Is that true? This is the, the contradictory. Thank you. Thank you. At least this guy knows. Fuck you fucking retards. <clears throat> He's pointing out, like, how do you have such crystal clear recollection of some feelings and in other things you don't remember a single thing about the event at all? That's not possible. That's not fear. That's not trauma. That's not whatever delusional shit you fucking losers are thinking of. That's a person who's lying and obfuscating some facts and being crystal clear on other things that he's invented to try to save himself because he knows he did a big boo-boo. Allison's asking you questions. You can remember all these feelings you had at the time. Is that true? Do you remember answering his questions about how you were feeling that day? The feelings I had when I, being, I was attacked? And, and when you were meeting with the Lieutenant Hart? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Listen, we gotta kill this interview, okay? This is some bullshit. He's Romanian, sir. What do you expect? Eastern European, we barely consider themselves these guys Westerners, okay? You're doing this to my client? You're brutalizing this guy up here. Give him a goddamn break. Objection sustained. Please rephrase the question. Oh, he did it. He's like, okay. <clears throat> we'll let you slide on the Eastern European objection. You testified today a lot about remembering what you were feeling that day, right? 
when mm -hmm. Mr. Nelson was questioning you, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. But when you're asked other details that might not be so useful, you don't remember them, right? Yep. Certain feelings and certain, they, they stick to you forever. <laughs> when they <laughs> affect you. to your defense, those stick to you, right? Sustain. You're examined by the jail nurse, uh, the, pardon me, the, the SART nurse, several hours after the incident, right? Yes. You never mentioned to her that you had been strangled, right? Didn't mention to her a, a lot. Sure. Not because I intentionally didn't want to do it. I didn't remember. I was sh still in shock. You didn't mention anything about your throat hurting? I don't remember what I mentioned to her. I understand. Yeah. You never at any point told anybody other than today that you, you had a sore throat or your throat was sore from after this incident, right? Can you, I'm, I'm not trying to be a coomer here, okay? I swear to God. <clears throat> I feel like, I feel like people bruise pretty easily. Like if it truly was this teenage boy trying to grab this guy and strangle him, I feel like that absolutely would be leaving marks on the person's neck. If not nail marks from not getting a good grip and scratching, but if an, if an, if an adult male is like trying to strangle you, like genuinely trying to, even with like 50% effort, I feel like that's absolutely gonna leave marks. This guy didn't have a single bruise or anything when he was being examined later on, not a single bruise. You didn't tell anybody? At any point during the day after you were arrested, when you're interviewed with people, when the jail or the SART nurse is talking to you, you never once said, oh, my throat is sore because Isaac Schumann strangled me, right? I don't remember what I told those guys either. I was, like I said, I don't remember a lots of the inter interaction I had with uh, anybody here at, at the jail. But today, yeah. Almost two years later, you remember that the next day your throat hurt. That's yes, because I, 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 yeah, and my back. You I can still remember have, that detail, but none of, not the other details? Yeah, my, my back still hurts right now. The SART nurse specifically <laughs> asked you when she was doing the exam, where are you hurt? And you pointed out some things to her, right? I may have. Yeah, but you never once said I had been strangled I have an injury to my throat, my throat hurts, nothing like that. I don't remember. When she asked you what hurt, you said your butt hurt from the rocks. That's, that was your response to the nurse. Do you think his lawyers advised him to take this to trial? Yeah, what do you mean, of course. <clears throat> what are you just gonna plead guilty to one count, first or second degree murder? I don't know what they charged him with. I don't know what the highest thing they charged him with. Yeah, of course you're gonna go to trial with us. You're not. You're not going to plead just guilty on some shit. It's like, does Wisconsin have the death penalty? Nope. But even so, life in prison or whatever? Yeah. Right? Don't remember. You had said that, um, you know, you're not, you're in poor health or you were at least in poor health back on July 30th of 2022. You had had your, your bypass surgery two years prior to that, right? Mm -hmm. People are saying you might plead guilty if the offer is good enough. Chance I was a bad offer or a stupid client? No, hold on. If you're a prosecutor, you're only making an offer if you've got like a good reason to think you're not gonna win in court, right? You're not gonna take a guy who's like on video from three different angles, like fucking stabbing five people and be like, okay, listen, if you plead guilty, we'll let you slide by on manslaughter maybe, okay? And voluntary manslaughter. Like, you're, there, unless, unless you think you're truly like, a, like gambling with a jury or whatever, I feel like you're not making this guy a significant offer when you have so much evidence against him. Also to save time, I feel like maybe, yeah, save time or whatever, I feel like that could apply to some types of crimes, but one, you've got five teens stabbed and one is dead with at least two different points of video on the circumstances, no shot. No fucking shot 
are you as a prosecutor be like, okay, you can plead this down to some lesser shit. No shot. You're going for the guillotine on this one. No, like how, why, why would you ever, um, why would you ever get, let him plead down on this? Is that a yes? Yes. And typically people that have medical procedures like that are given restrictions on what they can do in their activities, right? Yeah. And you apparently weren't restricted from... You don't have to plead it down, but just reduce jail time? You're, what are you reducing jail time on, bro? If even if even... Like, unless they run every sentence concurrently and he gets, like, the min... Set, what is the minimum sentence on 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 first-degree homicide or whatever in Wisconsin? What's your minimums on this? There's no shot. Five attempted murders? <laughs> like, even if you plead favorably for... This guy's spending the rest of his life in jail. I don't... I feel like there's no way. I could be wrong, by the way. Someone else to link the sentencing. Like, maybe you can get really favorable sentencing on stuff like this, but... It just... It's a high-profile case. You've got lots of evidence on your side. The defendant is fucked in every way because of all the statements he's made. I don't know why you would ever let this guy plea down anything that's not going to get you fucking murdered as a prosecutor. You're going to have your whole fucking state trying to kill you. I feel, I feel like I could be wrong. Maybe maybe this, maybe this works on things that in ways that I'm not aware of, but <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. It's only for attempt murder because <laughs> one it was a success. But he's right. Yeah. And you apparently weren't restricted from swimming snorkeling doing outdoor sports on a river okay, okay. and typically people that have medical procedures like that are given restrictions on what they can do in their activities right yeah and you apparently weren't restricted from swimming snorkeling doing outdoor sports on a river right i was for a while but two years later lots of the restrictions i believe got lifted those restrictions got lifted because you were you got better right I, I, you can say the doctor makes that decision but he says if you feel a little better do as much as you can yeah, and, and you were in fact snorkeling and swimming and doing things that day physical activities right snorkeling in 15 inches of water i was mostly just i didn't even snorkel snorkel that's that was not a, a lake or a but I was just, my whole plan for the day was to just float down the river and relax. You're able to run, at least you were back on July 30th of 2022, right? Run? You were able to run at that time, right? You weren't restricted from running. I mean... You didn't have a medical restriction to keep you from running, right? Not in, no. And in fact, you did run when you ran up on Isaac Schumann's group, correct? You call that run? Okay. That's not a run, but I wasn't running. I'm not allowed. I wasn't allowed to run or do any uh, activities like that. So, do you think he could have gotten off on self-defense if he'd kept the knife and surrendered himself to the police? Or the circumstances of what happened in the fight, of what happened in the fight, are too much. Um, <clears throat> I feel like the circumstances in the fight are the best things that you could argue, right? Because it is an older guy. There are five people. You're in the water. Everybody's a little bit drunk, right? Like, I and the video is ambiguous in the parts where you need it to be ambiguous. Thank God there's not, like, if there was an act, if the camera would have been on the one girl and he did, like, just full out punch her first, but everything, he's completely fucked. This doesn't even, he's just done. He's completely over. But the fact that that camera happened to turn away at both points when both girls get hit, whew, thank God for him. Or maybe that's not good for him if they struck first, like, really hard. Although I don't know what a 105-pound girl would have to do to a 280-pound guy to warrant him stabbing her. But, um, the, uh, yeah, the, 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 what happened in the fight is one thing, but it's all this stuff afterwards just reeks of guilt. It makes him seem so guilty, like he knew he was guilty. And he was acting incredibly with a high level of intentionality to hide the, the crime that he had just committed. So I wasn't running. At the time that this all happened, July 30th, 2022, you felt sufficiently healthy to go off on your own, away from your, well, your wife and your group, to go do snorkeling on your own, right? That's what I felt. I just want to check my notes. I think I'm almost done. We can have uh, exhibit four, item 10. 
I'm going to ask Investigator Schultz to actually handle it since it's evidence, physical evidence. Can you retrieve the exhibit? Oh, what is that? If uh, investigator can approach the witness, Your Honor. Yes. We're showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 4, I guess Item 10. <clears throat> but hiding the act doesn't make it not self-defense. It's what happened in the act itself that makes it so. I could have a home invasion and kill someone within rights, but hide the body because I'm an idiot, and that doesn't make it not self-defense. If you're in, like, an online debater sphere and you're trying to argue with machines or computers, maybe, sure. But in front of a jury, these facts become incredibly important. People are going to consider, like, how you act after an event like this happens in making a determination of whether or not they feel like you acted with a, with a guilty mind. Um, people are, people are going to consider that shit. Like, you, again, you can be the debater bro and try to argue like, well, actually, technically, like my state of mind could have completely changed after the fact. And it's actually has no bearing whatsoever on what my state of mind was during that. But like, nobody's, no jury's going to believe it. And they probably shouldn't because that's probably not true. That's, I don't even believe that. Do you believe that? Do you believe the story that this guy's saying? Do you think that he just forgot everything and was telling different stories to people because he just didn't know? Or do you think he felt incredibly guilty and was acting that way afterwards? <clears throat> If he walks, you have to complete Breath of the Wild on stream for a week deal. Well, no. I mean, he can always walk. A jury could always say, um, a jury could always acquit him, or one person could say, fuck you. Like, and that's your knife, right? Yes. That's the knife you used to stab these people. That's the knife I used to defend myself with. Yes. Take the deal, pussy. I tell uh, Jessica, I'll do it. 100 bucks, sure. I asked you earlier about when you stabbed Dante Carlson. You agreed that he was not attacking you at the point that you stabbed him. He was the last person stabbed, right? He attacked me. Earlier. But when you stabbed him, Tony Carlson had already broke up the fight, right? You said you agreed to that earlier. At that time... Everybody that came in contact with me attacked me. Anybody who looked at you? The girls? The two, did he stab one girl or two girls? I think it was just the one girl, right? Did she attack him? No. Anybody that came in contact with me, I felt attacked. So would a better defense for him be to just admit that he was feeling guilty and lied? Um, I don't know. At the end of the day, I don't know the, the legal theory behind what this defense is running. Maybe, maybe they considered, I'm sure they considered it and they thought it would be better to just say you don't remember. Um, although I don't think you can tell your client to say you don't remember. My guess is you're saying things like, listen, if you don't recall 100% accurately what happened, like it's okay for you to say that you don't remember. That'd be my guess. I don't think you can tell your client just say you don't remember. Um, but again, I, I'm sure that, I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're, they're thinking in terms of legal theory, like, listen, just be honest, say that, like, yeah, if you were, you felt guilty afterwards, so you tossed the knife, you know, you're an immigrant, you didn't know what was going to happen, and everything felt like, but, like, I mean, that's kind of a gamble, right? If, if you're running that defense, you're basically saying, like, yeah, I felt like I fucked up, I did feel guilty, that's why I did these things, so, I don't know, that's a lot. I don't, I don't know how many times, uh, yeah, I, I don't do criminal law, I don't fucking know. You felt attacked whether you were being physically attacked or not, right? I was in the, in the, in the uh, uh, moment, so I felt attacked by anybody that had either previously attacked me or was approaching to attack me. So you felt like you could stab folks who were not attacking you at the moment that you stabbed them? Objection. You walked up. I was being pushed to the floor, then being assaulted to the head, not grounds for self-defense. Because most people just wouldn't consider an 18-year-old boy slapping you in the face grounds to stab him and disembowel him. Most human beings in the United States of America wouldn't consider that to be an appropriate response. Especially if you've kind of put yourself in the situation, um, and you're kind of, like, instigating, and you're standing there staring them all down, you pull the knife at him. Most American citizens, most people in the world, wouldn't consider, like, a, an 18-year-old boy smacking you in the face or slapping you in the face as grounds to disembowel that 18-year-old boy. But you might.
You wouldn't though. You wouldn't if this was another case. You wouldn't if all the boys were white and this guy was black, or you wouldn't if this guy, if, if the circumstances were different. Nah, you wouldn't feel the same at all, but. Up to Dante Carlson and stabbed him in the belly, right? I did not walk up to Dante Carlson and stab him in the belly. I don't have any other questions, Your Honor. Mr. Nelson? Do any of you have some questions about your fitness on July 30th? If you, you attack someone holding a knife, what are the chances you're getting stabbed? Nobody, my understanding from all the video I've seen, nobody attacked this guy knowing that he had a knife. I'm pretty sure as soon as people saw that he had a knife, everybody pieced the fuck out. Nobody knew he had a knife when they were fighting with him. Ask you some questions about that, okay? Okay. Just maybe we can get it done on one question. Did you feel fit enough to take on 13 teenagers and adults in a fight by yourself without a weapon? I didn't. No. You were asked some questions about. Um, is this direct uh, examination out? Is his, is his own attorney back up here? what happened with each of these people, right? And you were shown some okay. stills. Mm -hmm. Were you in court when, do uh, you know how many frames are in per second of these videos? I learned they're like 24, 25. Okay. So one frame is a 24th of a second, is that right? Correct. When you were in that, let me play the video. I'm gonna play exhibit two. Are you sure? It seems like the kids thought he wouldn't do shit with the knife since they had cameras out until he snapped. You're, if you believe, I don't know what to say, I'm sorry. If you believe that, you're just lost. I don't know what to say, sorry. But also, maybe I'm lost, I don't know. I feel like I'm lost. I, like, the past, these, this one and then the Daisy one have been mind-fucking me really hard in my audience, so I'm not sure if I'm getting to, if I need to take a <laughs> two-week break or some shit. Where people are sincerely arguing, like, just you don't know that she actually did any sex work. Maybe she's just from a really wealthy family and speaks super broken English and does these weird modeling contests that nobody's ever heard of and like takes pictures outside. Doing, you're just sexist. Like, I don't know. Maybe maybe my mind is super fucked. I don't know. I'm not sure. I can't tell. I don't know. Maybe I'm like too too far on some shit because uh, my intuition has pushed me really strongly in both these directions. But Connected? I think so. One four, I am. Do you think he's using air server, or what if he got duet display? Did she just swear? Fucking D block. I don't know what she said. Yeah, I, yeah, start over. I don't have anything on my monitor either. Sorry, I asked a legitimate question. Okay, sorry. Are you sure? It seems like the kids thought he wouldn't do shit with a knife since they had cameras out. No, I think that if a bunch of these kids were standing around, I don't think anybody genuinely thought that this shit was going to be a real fight. That's why, that's why even though he got hit twice, I think, two or three times, maybe twice, um, even though that happened, is that forcing? Uh, even though that happened, there wasn't like a single fucking mark basically on this guy's body because none of these kids were like actually fighting. They were just like screaming and shouting, being rowdy and dumb or whatever. Um, If it was somehow proven the kids knew he had a knife when they attacked him, would you be willing to grant the same defense as Rittenhouse? Nothing about this case is like Rittenhouse. You need to erase that from your brain. It's like comparing every single foreign intervention to Iraq or Afghanistan. Nothing about this case is like Rittenhouse. I'm not even going to answer your question. It's a stupid fucking question. Nothing about this case is like Rittenhouse. Every single self-defense case is not like Rittenhouse. Rowdy and dumb is punching someone in the head when surrounding somebody. You're a perma ban. Bye. Nobody got punched in any of this on any of these videos. You don't have to make it more sensational than it already is. He got slapped. He got smacked or whatever. Nobody got punched. There was no close fist punching in any parts of these videos. Unless there's another video that I haven't seen. 
that's not the screen I'm looking at, Judge. I apologize. <laughs> My screen looks like that. Screen is this with the library? That was my. That's a. That's my home screen. But. Sensational said they were disemboweled. It. What do you think disemboweled means? Doesn't disembowel mean somebody cuts into your abdomen and stuff comes out? Isn't that essentially what a disembowelment is? Disembowel. Cut open and remove the internal organs of. Was the kid not holding his intestines when his stomach was cut open? I'm just gonna go scroll from 20. I think in the video, I think you can actually see his shit coming out. But yeah, I think any reasonable person, if your knife is all the way in somebody slicing here, would consider this a, basically a disembowelment or attempted disembowelment if you really want. Yeah, what do you mean sensationalized? You don't have to sensationalize it this way because this guy was a fucking lunatic with a knife that stabbed five kids. You're the one that says, they kicked him in the water. Nobody kicked anybody, you fucking retard. They punched him. Nobody punched anybody, you fucking retard. You know what a punch looks like? Google punch then? For, <clears throat> to be fair, we did the red pill arc. We did the red pill arc, and I might have a lot more female fans. My bad. Maybe people have used different words in different ways. Whenever I've talked to another man, or when I've been around men, punch means closed fist. I have never in my life heard a man refer to a open fist hit as a punch, ever. Maybe I've got other people here, or there are other communities that refer to like slaps or whatever as punches. Never heard another man refer to this as a anything but a punch, or refer to this as a punch ever. It's never in my life ever that before. But maybe other people have. I don't know. Maybe in your communities, maybe you guys say shit like that. Why are you watching this case in particular? I don't know. I think this is a really boring fucking case. This seems like a pretty open and shut case of fucking attempt murder or murder. Like, this guy fucked up really hard. And like, really obviously in so many different ways. It's not even interesting. It's not even like, even the Rittenhouse one I thought was a little boring, except for some deliberation on some whether some pixels were him brandishing a firearm before the thing happened. Even Rittenhouse is kind of boring. That's why when I saw, that's why I got so fucked early on when I was doing that stupid sponsorship in Sweden and somebody asked me, I was like, oh, it just looks like an open shut case of like self-defense. I don't see what's even controversial about this fucking case. Um, this is a similar one. I don't even know what the, would be controversial here. If he walks, it'll be controversial, but this seems like an open and shut case of like a dude wiling out <laughs> on, in the fucking river. I could see what it looks like for a second. Did you see the live stream poll? Yeah, 55% of people watching this stream said he's not guilty, so. Can you reconsider watching the video of the attack? Bro, we watched this video like five times. We went through more than that, and we did pixel by pixel. I don't know. Just maybe I need to take a break. I, I'm looking at my screen, and it shows the video, so I apologize. I, I'm flummoxed. This is Exhibit 2. The This is Exhibit 2. I want to play it from the one period of... Yes. Is that on the screen? All right. Before we press play, Mr. Mew, do you see what's on Re -pull the it? No, no, I'm saying the poll in this stream's chat, in the whatever this Fox 9 Minneapolis handball, this live stream. Screen there at 149. Yes. Is that you falling backwards? Yes. I want to press play and ask him to stop it at 205, okay? Okay. Why are conservatives making this a thing? I don't know. I asked earlier in chat. I feel like somebody... 
Tim Pool or somebody must have commented on this, and then all the conservatives felt like they have to defend it or some shit. But I feel like in any sane world, everybody's looking at this like, yeah, obviously the guy fucked up. Like, you might be able to say, yeah, you might have been a little bit worried or might have been scared a little bit, but like, did he really think he was in like serious threat? No. Was his behavior that of somebody who felt like their life was threatened? No. Should he have walked back to these kids? No. Like, was his behavior afterwards clearly indicative of a guilty conscience? Yes. Like, it, are all the lies that he said afterwards to cops and everything clearly indicative that he knew he fucked up? Yeah. Like, it's all of this is so plainly obvious. Unless some crazy evidence comes out, like a third camera that changes everything. Please plus play. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my god, we're playing like the the Quentin Tarantino accelerated version. Why is it so fast? Or oh, maybe I'm just so used to going through it slowly, I'm not used to seeing it at a normal frame rate. He ain't a woman! He ain't a woman! Did you observe those 16 seconds or so? Yes. You, if there's 24 frames a second and we watch for 16 seconds, as you sit here now, are you able to break down exactly what happened in each of those 284 frames? I mean, do you have a memory no. of... No. He's trying to help you. He's trying to say, listen, you can't remember this precise things that happened. It was a very short event. He's trying to help you, bro. <laughs> oh, man. One twenty-fourth of a second. No, for absolutely not. How, how, as far as time goes, if you can, mm -hmm. and I apologize, but if you can, just put yourself back in that space for a moment. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Yes. When you're back in that space, on that river, in that time, did you seem like you had 284 different chances to do different things and feel different things? God, you know what would be base is if the cross-examiner came up and he's like, you know what? Well, also, what a dumb fucking line. I feel like if it was a smarter judge, you wouldn't let him do the jury this. What if the guy comes up and like, actually, this was an iPhone 27 XS. It recorded 60 frames per second. So you actually had twice as many frames. You had twice as many discrete frames captured on that camera. So now do you feel like you had enough time to, like, what a stupid fucking, you could just speak in seconds, right? Like, oh, did you feel like in 16 seconds you could have figured out? But like, I, I understand why he's doing it, but it seems kind of stupid. 284 different chances to do different things and feel different things? No. How did time feel in that moment? It's fucking with my mind a bit, not gonna lie, because I usually agree with Destiny in most things, but it's really clear to me that this was self-defense. I could be wrong, obviously. Listen, here are two statements that I'm gonna make, okay? And then the one big one. The one big one is he shouldn't have stabbed those kids, okay? But I'll make these two statements. One, I think the kids did, assuming the conflict ended after they attacked him, I think the kids legitimately uh, could go like assault and battery, or they, they attacked him. They did, they did. Even if it wasn't a full-on punch, even if it was a like kick on the ground, he was trying to drown him, they did attack him. They slapped him and the guy kind of pushed him when he was on the ground or whatever, and then the other put his, and I was like, they did do that. So that did happen, one. And if nothing else had happened and they got charged with that, they'd be like, oh yeah, they attacked the dude. They, pr they probably didn't have a good reason to attack a guy. So that is one thing I will say. And then the second thing is, if this guy, when the girl walked up to him and he slapped her or whatever, or he started punching or whatever the guys when they were around him or whatever, I can also say like, yeah, I understand. I think he has a right to, to hit people if they're up on him like that. Like, I think that's fair or whatever. But that's not what happened. What happened was, was... He was in a situation that was kind of escalating. He had the chance to leave multiple times. One time he even did partially leave and then walked back and he did this knowing that he had a knife on him the entire time. And then he took that knife out as people started to get more rowdy. He stood there and he stared them down while they were getting rowdy. And then finally, when stuff started to, well, supposedly he hit or slapped a girl in front of him and then the other kid pushed him and that's when everything gets physical. Now what happened with, between the girl and him is hard to know who landed the first blow or whatever, right? But now at this point, now you're stabbing people around you. The, the issue here isn't like, does he have a right to defend himself? I think the issue is, does he have a right to lethal self-defense given the situation? If you want to argue that like he punches a few kids or whatever, or some bullshit like that happens, and then something else escalates, like, sure, but like lethal, like stabbing and killing people? I think that's wild. Was, it was not real. Everything was not real. Time wasn't uh, following the same rules. Can't they say he didn't mean to kill anyone? You'd have to ask a lawyer, dude, but I'm pretty sure that there are certain types of weapons that if you fight with them, it always counts as attempted murder because of the type of weapon that it is. There's always an attempted murder behind it. So if you have a, uh, if you fire a gun at somebody and you just shoot their leg, I don't think you, I don't think you can get anything charged less than like attempted murder or something. I don't think you can shoot somebody or stab somebody or something. I think, 
So I think I might be wrong. I might be wrong on that. But I think that depending on the weapon you use, I think you're almost always getting charged with attempted murder. No, that's not true because you can get assault with a deadly weapon, right? Hold on, let me check. Assault with a deadly weapon versus attempted murder. Let me see, actually, I'm not sure. The main difference between the two charges is the intent to kill. Attempted murder requires specific intent to kill, while assault with a deadly weapon only requires intent to cause fear or harm, not in While assault means you might not, um, you don't even have to technically hit the person. Let's see what they say here. <clears throat> attempted murder is defined as the intentional and premeditated attempt to kill someone, but the attempt falls, uh, falls short of actually causing death. Prosecution must prove that the defendant had the specific intent to kill and took a direct step towards committing the crime. On the other hand, assault with a deadly weapon is defined as the intentional use of a deadly weapon or instrument to cause fear or harm to another person. Uh, the prosecution must prove that the defendant intended to use the weapon to cause harm or fear and that the weapon was deadly. The main difference between the two charges is the intent to kill. Attempted murder requires specific intent to kill, while assault with a deadly weapon only requires intent to cause fear or harm, not necessarily to kill. I feel like there are certain ways that you can use a weapon, though, to where it's always... Like, if you shoot someone in the chest, are you ever getting assault with a deadly weapon? Or if you, like, stab somebody in the stomach, are you ever getting assault with a deadly weapon? I don't know the answer to this. There was an angry mob attacking him and he was strangled in the water. Your perma ban, Dante. See ya. When you... S s s when would it be okay to insert yourself into a potentially dangerous situation if you are armed? Uh, I think if, there, if somebody else's life, limb, or like threat to serious bodily injury is on the line, then I think... Um, then I think it's probably okay. And th that's like a moral stance. I don't know legally what that looks like, but. Slow, very slow. When you said you didn't have a memory of- Wait, hold on. We know that self-defense of others is one sometimes, and in the Rittenhouse case, he also did. That is not true. I That was never a part of the Rittenhouse case. That that Kyle inserted himself between two other people fighting, or was, or was inserting himself into a situation to protect somebody? No, that is, I don't remember any part of that. I think we watched that entire trial. I don't ever remember that being part of the defense there. Some of the details, but you had a memory of the feelings. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain, how is that? So, feelings are brought on by, by, by what's happening, at least with me. If, if you get hit in the head, that's a feeling of hurt. If you fall back and you hit your head, you fall back on river rock and, and, and you, you get hurt, you feel pain. Uh, when you know you can't get away and you feel like you're drowning and there, there are people on top of you pounding you and holding you in the water, that, that's a, a, st a time stamp in a feeling I don't think either of those things happened on video or are shown on video. Filing cabinet that says this is this is what I suffered. Do you exactly. It's a, go ahead. I'm curious, actually, at any point in the video, even when he was pushed initially, was his face ever in the water at any point in the video? Does anybody have a link to the video? Also, didn't he have his knife out before? I'm trying to think, did he have his knife out? He had his knife out before that initial push too, didn't he? <coughs> Let me check. Does he have it out here? I need to remember the timeline for this shit. I think he has the knife out here, right? So he's he's already got the knife out even before he's been pushed, right? I think, right? The fucking news banner, yeah. Pretty sure he does. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, he does, he does. So he's got the knife out before, I think, before anybody's even touched him, right? Nobody's even touched this guy yet, and he's already drawn his knife. Right? Up to this point in the video, I, don't, I think before 142, I don't think anybody's touched him yet. 
And then, unfortunately, the camera turns right as the first whatever happens. Supposedly, he hits her. I think people say he hit her. I don't know what he's saying here. And then, then he gets pushed. I don't even know. Everyone in chat said yes, by the way. I don't know if his face was ever even in the water. I don't think it was. But let's check. We can watch slowly. This guy slaps him. Is his face in the water here? He already stabbed her there? No, I don't believe he stabbed her yet. It looked like he could have, but I don't think so. This kid kind of pushes him. This frame looks really bad, but we did the play-by-play -play on this. But it's does it's not anything what it looks like. It looks like he's like... It looks like on this frame that he's like drowning him, but the guy's face is like three feet away from the water at this point. It looks like... These frames look like, oh, they're drowning him, but he's not anywhere near the way. He's almost on his knees at this point. You can see it as he starts to get up in the, uh, like here. Like he's, he's fully on his knees at this point. And then we got this. Now he claims at this point that he was just falling he was falling back, and that's why the knife came up, but... Ooh, hold on. Oh, the camera is so clutch and so not clutch at different points. I'm reaching a little here. Is he doing one of these here? You think? I can't tell. I don't think there's enough to conclude for sure, but he's got a handout up here. Or do you think he's just pulling it back? He could just be moving it up, maybe. <laughs> he stands up. Still doesn't seem like he's making any effort to leave or extricate himself, right? If he does genuinely fear for his life, he's not like... And then I think one of the girls comes up and does something, and then he... <laughs> pokes her. <laughs> sends her away. Later. Still, this guy is not even attacking him. He just, like, puts his hands on him. He's like, bro, like... Oh, true. I thought initially, I thought he did attack him, but he's not. He's like, bro, just leave. He puts his hand on his back. He, like, keep in mind, if this kid was trying... Now, also, reasonable person. Does he know this? Maybe, maybe not. But, like, if this kid was trying to go after him, right? He would just punch him in the back of the head. He would have hit him here. But he's not. He puts his hand on his back. Bro, you need to get out of here. Time to leave. <laughs> Stab him. Guy still not making any effort to leave. Then the kid tries to push him. Doesn't work. Oh, hold on. Oh. Still not making any effort to run away. Feared, feared for his life, by the way. Fearing for his life right now. Fearing for his life here as he stands and stares down the five young men with the rippling muscles and the nubile young bodies, the virile young men, the young chads in front of him. Uh, now they realize, like, oh, shit. <laughs> Bro, get my name in the video. I want to go viral. Everybody's losing their minds at this point. I feel like if you attempt to run there and turn your back, you open yourself up to getting bum rushed. The problem is there's too much video for that retarded explanation because if he's truly worried about these groups of kids that are like calling him names and blah, 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 why didn't he just leave at 20 seconds? Look. Oh, God. Oh. So he comes, he's coming forward here and I don't know if he steps on pointy rocks, he falls forward and touches the kid. Oh. 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 I'm assuming he's tripping here and then he drops his things. Oh, God. 
I don't know if he accidentally grabs his leg or his foot or something there, but he drops his things. Yeah. Yeah. What, are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> Get away from us! What? What's going on with y'all He's on camera! Guys, let's go! He's on camera! Yo, the new iPhone got that good quality! I don't know what he says here. What do you say? Yeah, what the hell? They're shouting at him, walk away, walk away. They say walk away, walk away, and then... Now he's walking over here to talk to this lady. Is she part of his party? I think she might be part of another group. Who the hell is this? Comes back, stares at the guys. Then he has the opportunity to leave right now. He's completely, they've already called him a pedophile. This is where Driscoll's like, he's surrounded with no escape. He could have just walked away. But he's not. He talks to this lady for a little bit. He's thinking about what he wants to do. Oh, reaches into his pocket here. Reaches into his pocket here. He's waving to his group. I don't know why. They're shouting and being retarded. They are. They are shouting at him and being retarded. But like, nobody's keeping him from walking away. Nobody's touched him at this point. The kid does have the camera in his face. Annoying. All the kids are shouting. It's annoying. But again, he can still walk away. He's already got his knife out. Already has his knife out and nobody's touched him yet. He already has his knife out and nobody's touched him yet. And he's had multiple opportunities to just continue walking away and he doesn't. But instead he walks back, he pulls his knife out amongst a bunch of 18 to 22 year old kids that are shouting and screaming or whatever, right? Is that when he pulls the knife? He's already got his knife out. He's already had it out. I think he's had it out for like 10 seconds at this point. He's got his knife out. He turns around. He's staring him down. Now... Now the girl is in his face. I don't know what for. He's got his knife in stabby stab position. The two girls are chatting. I don't know what the f is going on here. He looks around still, not making any attempt to leave. Now something happens here where witnesses say he hit the girl. I don't know if he did or didn't. I can't say 100%, but multiple people say at this point, apparently he hit the girl. And then once he hits the girl, a couple boys come forward. I think three, they shove him away from the girl. One sl smacks him. So he's on the ground here. He kind of gets up. This kid like tries to push him, but he's like not even close enough to do anything. Nobody's kicked him while he's down. It's not multiple people beating on him. Nobody's punched him. Nobody's punched or kicked him in his face. He did get slapped once in the face or forehead or whatever. He did get slapped. And then this kid kind of pushed him here. Um, he's already got his knife out, okay? Already had the ability to do multiple times. Now he stands up, boom, disembowel. Boom, up through the stomach. This kid is, they've got him now. <clears throat> Stands up. Kids, these guys, the kids aren't even like all engaged. Like people keep saying like a mob attacking him, a mob attacking him. Nobody here even realized what just happened. Nobody here even knows. Not a single person here even saw the fucking knife. And he had this kid from here all the way up here. Like Asian kid over here is like, what? But like, they're like, this guy, look, he's not even looking at the guy on the ground. Look at this, his toned young stomach, his fresh abs. He's wearing a belt on his pants in the river. My God. Uh, but they're not even looking at this guy here. It looks like they're mainly talking to themselves or maybe he's looking at his friend that just fell over. Like, he stands up, knife is out. Like, is anybody even dealing with him right now? Is anybody even looking at him at all? It doesn't look like it. I don't think anybody's even looking at him except then the girl behind him comes up to talk and then he turns around, whoop, pokes her, she gets stabbed. And I think he thinks that he punched her. Seems like this guy's like, bro, shit is getting a little wild. Can you leave? He's got his hand on his back. Turns up, boom, stabs that guy. <laughs> twice or tries to twice. Uh, still no effort to retreat. No attempt to get away. No mob of people attacking and kicking him and punching his face. Not, none of this is happening. 
Then I think at around here, or maybe a few seconds before, they realize he has a knife. And now they're like, oh, shit. Not trying to meme, you can see blood in his hands. Yeah, it's really obvious if you look for it, yeah. And then after this situation, he walks to the other end of the river. He dumps his knife after wiping it off with his hand. He dumps the knife. Uh, he comes back to his friends. He hops in his inner tube, puts on his sunglasses and his hat, starts asking people, do you see what happened? Anything going on? Damn, that was wild. Cops come to him. He's talking to the cops. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think the boys were fighting or did somebody get stabbed or, or maybe I think they had a knife on them or some shit. Starts lying about his story. Like, bro, no shot. No shot. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. It, 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 it's something I would love to, to erase from my mem memory, but unfortunately, there are lots of those feelings, very strong feelings I can't erase. Apparently, XQC disagrees. He has perms to join my Discord if he disagrees, but it's going to be boring because it's just, it's going to be him shouting a million times like, but, our, but six boys, five boys, but five boys, but five boys. Like, I don't think anytime there's five teenage boys around you that you're surrounding yourself with over and over again gives you the right to start killing people. But, you know. I know my feelings. I lived with my feelings for 54 years. How about this feeling? How confident are you in the accuracy of this feeling? That you're 100% confident that that is my feeling. 100%. You always complain about people morally loading words. Why do you keep doing it with disemboweled instead of stab? Because he didn't just stab the guy. He stabbed four people and he disemboweled one. That's not, he's not just uh, like randomly uh, stabbing people. I, I, I just disagree with that. <sighs> okay, what's uh, up? No, I just disagree with that. Disagree with what? Just like everything. <laughs> Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I, 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 I actually agree. I just think like in, in your, I watched your whole commentary, right? Mm -hmm. I just feel like um, the, the only invalid thing that you said about uh, across the board is just how, um, how it plays out in, in the real world, right? At the beginning, um, when he's being put into the water. I feel like that state of mind is like, is like, um, it could get really scary when you mean push. I, under, I understand what you're saying. Water, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but that didn't happen randomly, and he already pulled his knife out before that even happened. Yeah, true. So it like, I think there are ways that this could have played out. Like when he when he initially is like waddling over and he drops his goggles and he falls forward. If all the boys around then would have started like pushing him over and shit, then I could say like, okay, well this is kind of scary. These guys are being really aggressive for no fucking reason. I think things change a bit then. But he's already pulled his knife out, and he's had so many opportunities to just walk the. Way. and he doesn't he never walks he's like he's like i don't want to say he's like grinning at them but he's almost like challenging them and he does it and he's ready to like <laughs> like stab 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 he's not like trying to run or he's not he doesn't seem like he's afraid of his life or anything he's like standing there like ready to fight every fucking person i don't know if this dude was like a knife special class in like fucking romania or what or if he's like some budapest trained oh, yeah. super soldier or what but like jesus christ it's like people who like push themselves into like in, in like a, a spot where they would be legally allowed to like use something or whatever and they 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 play on the specifics to create that scenario or so they could use their fucking knife or weapon, right? You know, and they, they have it and they, they know they have it and they, they're like, oh, we're reaching for it. I think that's, that's really fucking, that's really fucking lame and stupid, yeah? Yeah. Um. But, but, but the only, the, the only thing I, I want to say early on is that if, let's say in this scenario, I mean, it's not, it, I guess it, 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 hypotheticals are irrelevant, but like. Bucharest, not Bucharest, um, sorry. Go ahead. Being, being kind of surrounded with people and being pushed around like in the water or whatever, that just scares the fuck out of me. Like that, that would put me in a fucking like state of fucking complete panic or whatever, you know? Yeah, like, I understand that, but he didn't seem scared. I don't think he was scared because he had yeah, a knife on him the whole time. Because if, if he was, I think he would have just left way earlier because he had so many opportunities to walk away, but he doesn't. He comes back and he's like grinning. He's like, look, and he pulls his knife out. Like at the point where you pull your weapon out, wouldn't you be trying to run? If you've pulled your weapon out because you're in fear of your life, wouldn't you be backing away or trying to escape at that point? Why are you just sitting there waiting to go? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 100%. At, at, at least walking back or disengaging in like either verbally. So that's what I was saying earlier with the fucking guy in the car that gets assaulted or whatever the fuck, right? He was like, set the fence, set the fence, set the fence. And it's like, if you, it's only set the fence if you, if you can fucking, if you can articulate it, right? And it makes sense uh, in a scenario. Like, you can't, you, can't, you can't just fucking, somebody hurt you and, and, and like a, a fucking 20 minutes later, you fucking jump on him and you fucking kill him and say, oh yeah, set the fence because... If you have opportunities to escape or to withdraw and you didn't mm -hmm. and you chose to engage and then chase them down, that's completely, that's not the same thing at all. Yeah. So, so what, so what even happened anyway? Um, uh, 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 with this Romanian guy or whatever, or whatever his guy is. Like what's the story from start to finish? 
Yeah, yeah. He just, he, 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 I'll take it in, in the river, and then in, in what, he, he stabs five of them or whatever? One dead, five injured or something? I think one dead, four injured, yeah. But then afterwards, he's like, he does a lot of shady shit. Like, he goes to the other side of the riverbank to toss the knife. He goes back to his friends and hops in a tube, and he puts on a hat and glasses. When the cops show up, he's like, oh, I heard somebody got stabbed? What happened? Or like, oh, wow, weren't the, I think the boys were fighting. I saw them from far away. Like, he's like clearly trying to cover his ass. What the fuck? Yeah. What was he thinking? Like, what? I think he just wanted I to mean, fight. I, that's what it seemed like. As soon as, like, when you pull a knife out and you walk back into a situation like that, like, what, what are you expecting to happen? Like, you're arguing yeah. with people holding a knife out? And he's not even, like, trying to... It's not like he's trying to scare them away. Like, hey, stop, I got a knife! He just, like, pulls it out, like, and ready to fight with it. He's just like, fuck it, let's go. That's what it seems like to me, but... Uh, yeah, I've seen too many fucking online videos. To, if I see a knife, I'd probably fucking run full speed and never stop. It's wow. fucking scary as shit. Well... Well, I mean, knives are very scary. What, 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 what did you chat think about this? Oh, uh, yeah, he could have retreated 100%. I don't know. Apparently a whole bunch of my community or maybe not a whole bunch, but a vocal minority are really dead set on this guy who's like fully acting in self-defense the whole fucking time. But I don't know if there's some conservative he, commentator has talked about it or something. Oof. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I, the argument in self-defense of it, I feel like if people always overplay the, the amount that you can uh, articulate like uh, fucking self-defense or whatever, people people really don't know about self-defense. I feel like uh, uh, self-defense that involves violence and shit is like last, like absolute last resort back into the wall, no way to escape, no options of getting out, like... Kind of, I mean, like, never... sure. You don't technically have a duty to retreat, although if you're using lethal self-defense, the jury's gonna keep that in mind. But I think another issue, too, is, like, people keep comparing this to, like, Kyle Rittenhouse, and they, I think people really want it to be like that for some reason. But, like, Kyle Rittenhouse, after he shot three people, he, like, literally walked right to the police. This guy threw on a hat and sunglasses, and he got in his inner tube, and he literally floated down the river. <laughs> like, that's literally what he did. <laughs> and the cops are asking, yeah. or the defense, or the prosecutor's asking, like, why did you float down the river? And he's like, I don't know, man. I just wanted to float, dude. What <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, true, but that, that, does that really say a lot about intention? What's it, it's an after-the-fact thing. You don't know how people are going to process things. In the, in yes, it does, it does. People consider heavily what you're doing after the fact, for sure. If you're doing things after the fact where, if let's say you plead, like, insanity, or you plead um, like it was self-defense or some shit and then right after yeah. the things happen you start trying to cover up every single aspect of the crime you lied about it to everybody yeah that's oh gonna... that guy yeah that guy yeah yeah 100%. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah 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 it's what you mean it's what you mean uh, I think that'll factor heavily. Like in Rittenhouse's case, if he would have like, after shooting the dude, if he would have like held his gun up and started running through the crowd to escape, like to drive back home without telling anybody, I think that would have, I think that the jury could have factored that in and, and potentially uh, I, don't about, I don't know about that case. I don't know about that case. I don't know what, what. Sure, I'm just saying it looks worse than going to the cops immediately after, right? Because that sells yeah. that you think you're in the right, or you think you've, yeah, but. Yeah, I, what if you need to think about that case anyway, even though I don't know what happened on that. Which, what case? The, the right in house thing, what is that? Oh, right now, I think he was fully within his right to defend himself. I think 100% on the up and up for all of that, you yeah. know? Interesting. Interesting. But. Okay, I gotta leave in like five minutes, so I'm gonna finish watching this and then. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? So, so, so what is the law thing about that? What is the law thing about that? For Kyle Rittenhouse? Yeah. Um, when you when it comes to criminal matters or when it comes to juries, when you're asking what does the law think about it, the law can only give you a guideline on what you can charge. Oh no, no the, jury, the jury. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, the jury, the jury acquitted him. Yeah, he was know, he yeah, walked yeah, on yeah. everything. Yeah. I I went full walk. He fully walked on everything. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. What? Right. Are people outraged about that? Uh, some people were. People on the left were super outraged, yeah. They say he was like a murderer and everything, and yeah, people on the right were really happy, but... What the fuck? Alright, well, thanks for the uh, comment there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll see you later. I love you, be careful. See ya, bruh. See you, love you too, bye. Bye. percent confident even if you can't remember the details of everything you saw correct even if you can't remember the details of everything you heard right let me because there were some questions and i want to just make sure we cover it right mm -hmm. aj mark do you remember each of these acts that you're charged with each of these uh, acts of stabbing no do you remember um the particulars that is i should say the particulars of like X person did this, or Y person did this, or Z person did this? No. Do you remember, do you have any memory of just randomly stabbing people? No. What is your memory as to why you did what you did? I was... Compare this to, like, Rittenhouse's testimony. What did he say when he was... Did he say that, like, 
I saw him pull out a gun. I saw him with a skateboard attack me. I saw him like, <laughs> he's looking up Rittenhouse now. Like this, like, I don't remember literally any part of any of this whatsoever. Afraid for my life. And, and what I, I, I did, I had to do to defend myself. Did you, do you have a memory of stabbing anybody that didn't come towards you or attack you or touch you or push you or hit you? No. Did you ever just randomly go up and hit somebody? Uh, no. I, like, I feel like, I don't know how the prosecution is allowed to address this in court or if it'll just be in closing statements, but I feel like from a jury perspective, I feel like this looks really bad. You're obviously, you're setting your client up for easy answers, for easy dunks by asking them questions that are hopefully would you say exculpatory or exonerating? Like, oh yeah, you didn't do anything that you felt like wasn't self-defense. But for him to have crystal clear answers to every single question here, but you don't remember a single thing or reason about why you lied or said anything else at any other point in time, the only things you remember are the exact answers you need to give to, to exonerate yourself from this crime, that's wacky, that's wacky. Do you have any memory of Tony Carlson trying to break anything up? No. Do you, you weren't, you were asked about that, but I know there's some frames on that. Do you remember the frame in which Tony- I'm not talking about this guy, but is this possible? Is it possible for someone to be justified in self-defense, but he still tries to cover it up? Yeah, of course. Even for this guy, it's possible. It's possible. It's always possible, right? We're not asked to make 100% judgments when we do convictions, just beyond a reasonable doubt, like 99%. Um, anything's possible, but people are gonna look at what you do afterwards. Like, is it possible that, you know, you're, boyfriend can fall into somebody's pussy and he didn't mean to cheat or like that's possible right is it possible that um is it possible that some dude uh, you know like went into the bank and gave the teller the wrong number and it just happened to be your account i mean like anything is possible but we're not asked to to it's not deductive it's inductive we're asked to make a, a highly 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 inductive no not highly inductive you say uh with a with a high degree of certainty but not 100 percent certainty that's not a that burden will never be reached by almost anything right Carlson's coming up from behind and pushing you. I didn't know who it was, but I remember being held in the water. I mean, it's a feeling that I, it, keeps, it gives me the nightmares, the trauma that was caused by that. that that's the trauma that I, that, that I remember. There were asked some questions there at the end about the Larry and Davis video. Could you make anything out in there? No, I thought I was looking at Sasquatch. Do you remember, uh, do you remember anything about Dante? Dante Carlson is the person on the video previously that we saw here that it hit you. You know that, correct? Yeah. And he's the person in those two-tone shorts, correct? Yeah. Um, do you have a memory of how it came to be that you defended yourself against him that's not on the Jawan Cockfield video? Even your statement as is with no other qualifiers sounds retarded, but you're trying to make it, or, or like what, you, what you're saying is reasonable, but you think it sounds retarded, but you're retarded. Like, according to Destiny, stabbing someone slapping you is murder, but shooting someone chasing you is self-defense. Like, yes. If somebody slaps you in general, you probably shouldn't stab them. If somebody is chasing you, in general, you're probably way more clear to do more. If they're chasing you, the implication being they're trying to get away and they're not letting you. Yeah, you're, you're trying to make an absurd statement, but on its face, taken literally, it makes perfect sense. Like, <laughs> yes. No. You remember him coming up to you? I remember lots of people coming on, on to me. I couldn't distinguish. Who I, I don't remember color of, of shorts or anything like that. Did you ever swing or hit the knife out of anger? No. Why do you use the knife? I use it because I'm a mechanical engineer. I use it as a tool. But I, what I use it for that day, I used it to save my life for self-defense. That's all. Mr. Smestad? So, just from you... We hear over and over again that there was 13 people there and you're there by yourself, right? Apparently, yes. But we know that's not true because Ariel was behind you. Objection. Sustained. Oof. 13 people did not attack you, correct? I don't know. Looking at the evidence, correct. In the picture at the time, 
I didn't know that. 13 people were using words that you didn't like, right? In action, right? Two women touched you on your shoulders and arms, right? They didn't just touch me on my shoulders and arms. You know that. This would be a part where if if he had like, and I'm curious if they've shown pictures or anything, if there was a medical report done afterwards, if he had like a ton of like scratches or gashes or marks on his back or at least like red imprints from from teenage women's hands, it could go a farther way and like a this. But like, bro, where are the marks? You have no marks on your, what are the marks on his body? I know when they took him in for medical, they said he had a couple scratches on his hands or something. But like, bro, where are the, where are the marks? Where are the bruises? Where are the pictures? They didn't just touch me on my shoulders and arms, you know that. You were 250 pounds at the time, right? Yes. And these women touching your arms caused you to fear for your life? Objection. They were not touching. Objection. See objection. <laughs> I don't know, let me look one up real quick. Fuck. Fuck. Objection. They were not touching. Objection. See objection. Let me approach. That's not the evidence, that's not what right. we said. Again, members of the jury, disregard what the attorneys say because what they say is not evidence. What the witness says is the evidence that you rely on. Next question. He said the time slowed down for you on redirect, right? He said the rules didn't apply, time slowed down. Uh, it, it, to me, at that time, everything looked felt different. If time had slowed down, you would have time to consider your actions, right? <laughs> if it did slow down, yes. So. <laughs> this is like a retarded, it's a retarded line of questioning. But I guess it's in response to a retarded defense. Like, when well, you said time slowed down, one, one second in our world is like one minute in yours. Yes. Well, then why didn't you consider it with all the extra time you had, apparently, in your time dilated state of mind? Those were actions, right? <laughs> If it did slow down, yes. So it is a good line of questioning. Slow down, but yes. But that's what I don't you, know, but it's funny. You said, right? I understand. You never told the SART nurse that you had been drowning, right? Objection beyond the scope. Overruled. I don't remember what I told the doctor. You never the told Lieutenant Hart that you had been drowning? I don't remember. Nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Mew. You may sit at the table. You need a few minutes? Oof. All right, uh, let's come back at 3.45. Please take the jury out. All right, the jury. What happened on July 30th, 2022? Well, what happened on July 30th, 2022 is a group of drunk teenagers led by the ringleader, Juwan Cockfield, saw an opportunity to torment a man who was by himself. I don't think we have time to watch all of this shit. I don't think I want to spend two hours on this today. Absolutely senseless and horrific acts of violence. And all Nikolai Mew had to do. These microphones are trolling the out of me too. Does nobody hear that like that punchy noise when they punch in your fucking, I can't even do it. How punchy these stupid mics are. I can't tell if it's just me or not. Jesus is so annoying. Walk away. All he had to do was walk away. That's what you've seen in this case. You saw he told Lieutenant Hart, they told me I can't run away. Obviously not true. Think about the result of his actions. Everything you've seen in this trial, the horrific injuries, the death of Isaac, why didn't he just walk away? His only explanation when testifying was, I stood my ground. I stood my ground. First of all, Wisconsin is not a stand your ground state. Objection. Overruled. I'll talk about that. Can you object during closing arguments? I thought you had carte blanche to say almost anything in a closing argument. Can you object in a closing argument? Where's my criminal people? I thought that was like super, super not a thing you're supposed to do. 
Can the opposing attorney lodge an objection when his counterpart is giving closing arguments? Yes, and it's very important to do so to preserve the issue of an improper argument for review and appeal. It's one of the best ways to get a reversal on appeal is there are strict rules where it can be properly argued. Give me closing. Oh, okay. Maybe it is. I feel like I heard that. I don't know where I heard that from. You can't give unlawful direction to the jury. Sure. But in terms of like making appeals to a motion and like telling stories and stating facts, that are, I thought you had a really wide range of what you could talk about for a closing argument. I stood my ground. I stood my ground. First of all, Wisconsin is not a stand your ground state. Objection. Overruled. I'll talk about that specifically from your jury instructions. Second, that's not true as I'll show you. He didn't just stand his ground. I'm not gonna defend the actions of the boys who testified. It was misguiding him on what the law is? Was he? Why, the... The objection was overruled though, right? He was fine. No? It was cruel what they were calling Nikolai. They shouldn't have been mocking him, calling him predator, raper. But their conduct did not justify what Nikolai did. Meanwhile, the defense attorney calls one of the boys a ringleader. I think you're allowed to do that. I wish I had, I don't know why I heard this. Look, it might've been a friend. Maybe it's not reliable. But I, you're allowed to be pretty emotional and pretty, like, this is like your last hurrah to summarize everything that's happened to the court, give your most compelling narrative, explain what you believe happened and everything. You heard from Elena, Isaac's mother, about her son Isaac. He was 17 years old when he was killed. He enjoyed golfing, spending time with friends, recently started a new business, detailing cars. He was an honor student looking forward to going to college. His death was senseless. One of the things defense said in the beginning of trial in their opening was, they're glad there's a video. So are we. Without the video, Nikolai would have slipped away. The only reason he was apprehended was because law enforcement had that screenshot of him. The video doesn't fade with time. It's not biased, not influenced by alcohol. As I told you in the beginning of this case, the violent episode from the video is about 25 seconds from the point he punches Madison until you see him walking off after stabbing five people. He's not seen, Nikolai is not seen in that video for eight to nine seconds until the point you see him walking away. You don't see him stab Dante. Some of you may have wondered why we called Larry and Davis. Certainly it wasn't for his eyewitness testimony. But he took a video. He took a video that captured a different angle than Juwan's video. It's grainy, it's difficult to see, but you can see enough. <clears throat> and it shows Nikolai seeking Dante out and stabbing him when his group is in the opposite direction. Nikolai walks into a crowd of people, stabbed on, stabs Dante. Before I show you that video again, I need to provide some context from Juwan's video. Take it off. screen please. So here at two minutes and six seconds, this is after Nikolai has stabbed the four people that you do see, parts of on the video. He's standing next to Ariel. Ariel's there. Nikolai's not by himself. Two minutes, eight seconds, that's the last you'll see of Nikolai until you see him walking off in this video. You see Dante, or AJ, the boys running back to their tubes, and you see Larian filming in the background. Larian captured what, not, what Nikolai was doing at this point, even though this video didn't. And here, in a moment, Thank you. 
you can see the edge of Dante swim trunks on the right. You can see the white on top, the dark on bottom. At this point in Larian's video, Dante's just been stabbed. The next you see of Nikolai, he's walking off. You can see Dante in the background, holding his stomach, looking down at his wound. Well, actually, you can keep it up for a second, sorry. And then for con um, further context, you see Alex Bank running Isaac. <laughs> okay, this is boring, okay. We'll see the defense's case. <clears throat> or a closing statement. They taunted him. They called him names. Like, and pile and pred- Why is he saying it like that? God, that'd be a good donut sound. Like Reaper and pedophile and predator. They did this for no legitimate purpose. When they did this, they're yelling and carrying on. It attracted the attention of another group, right? Led by Madison Cohen and Dante Carlson. Six drunk teenagers quickly turned into 13. 13 against what? They got in his face. They screamed at him. They called him names. They swore at him. They put their hands on him. And the group of six, they became brave. The group of six became brave to the point that they circle him and start taunting him. They do this to a man who has done nothing, absolutely nothing to them. Then, when that man, Mr. Mew, tries to create some space between him and Madison Cohen, they pounce. They punch him. They push him. They slap him. They hit him again. They choke him from all directions. And Nick Mew <coughs> acts in self defense. That's what happened on July 30th, 2022. I just want to give you guys a little bit of an indication as to kind of where I'm going to go and more importantly what I think you need to think about when you are back there thinking about the evidence, okay? First is the law. One, there is no duty to retreat, period. That is the only requirement. In this state, bullies like Madison Cohen don't get to tell us where to go. Bullies like Madison Cohen don't get to get in our face and require that we leave. That's not a requirement here. Keep that in mind. Two, subjective beliefs, okay? When you're listening to the... Or, contemplating the evidence and replaying it in your mind. You are to do that and consider the beliefs, not the actions, but the beliefs of Mr. Mew. And when you do that, you are to do that from his perspective. At the time that the events were occurring. So while we have a video that video is from the perspective of Juwan Kakfi. The video perspective that the jury is required to consider it is as Nick Mew is holding the camera. I'm going to address this a little bit later, but 
the idea of provocation. Whether or not Nick intentionally caused harm to Madison Cohen. That is something that you should consider when you're considering provocation. And the other main one I want to talk about is what it means, because it's different here, beyond a reasonable doubt. So normally, beyond a reasonable doubt is this hurdle, and the state has to jump that hurdle in order to prove a case. It's a little bit different here. Okay? Because in this case, self-defense has been alleged. Remember when you're back there. Nick Mew doesn't have to prove he acted in self-defense. They have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he didn't act in self-defense. They have to prove that his beliefs were unreasonable. Okay? So, the way that I look at this video, the main video of Juwan Cockfield, we've already seen, we've all seen the nine second video where he's screaming at Mr. Mew, calling him a raper. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the video that you've seen probably more than you want to. But I'm breaking that up into really three parts, okay? Is that the law? Yes. The argument here is not whether or not he acted in self-defense. The argument is whether or not he murdered somebody, or but if the self-defense was like a mitigating factor, so it shouldn't be treated as such, right? For the for the prosecution, it's not a matter of like, well, was it self-defense or not? The original goal is the prosecution has to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt, you engaged in behavior that's consistent with our understanding of first or second degree murder, right? That's the burden for the prosecution. The defense has to prove... Um, the 51% standard that a reasonable person could have acted in self-defense here. The burden is higher on the prosecution than it is on the defense here. That is true. Zero to 149 is the first part, all right? Before anything actually happens in terms of the attack. And what, it, what is in dispute in that first minute and 49 seconds? I think two things were raised in the case that are, were in dispute. And that is, first, whether or not these drunk teens were actually afraid of Mr. Me. Right? They, I think to a person, they testified, yeah, we were really concerned about Mr. Me. Does and you get to use your everyday experiences in life when you decide what to believe. Does that look to you like teenagers who are afraid of that person? Is that what that looks like to you? Does this photo of drunk teenagers taunting him, does that make you believe in your experiences in life? That he can't even, he's not even looking at them. <laughs> they're afraid of him. Or is this what drunk teenagers who are terrified, is that what they look like? Does that make sense to you? Because you heard this. As the numbers rose, as the number of people grew, their fear it decreased. And you've heard Mr. Anderson say over and over again, all Nick Mew had to do was walk away. Well, you heard from each one of those tubers, those drunk teenagers, we could have passed. When he walked over by Madison Cohen, we could have passed. And you heard Owen Pellicle. I didn't want to pass. I wanted to see how this was going to play out. Why? Because Juwan Packfield was recording this entire incident. They wanted to see what was going to happen. They're not afraid. They want to see how this is going to play out. And Juwan Packfield. What are you leaning on the decision right now? I, I, I would be surprised if they didn't 
uh, convict on at least second degree. I would be shocked if the self-defense goes through. But it's a jury trial. Anything's possible. Said it best of all. It's for the culture. He wanted to put it on the internet so other people could see it. And when you're using your everyday experiences in life, ask yourself this. Do people who are afraid of other people, do they walk up on them? Is that what people do when you're afraid of someone? <coughs> or do you try to get away from What would you say if you were on the jury? First degree murder, 100%. That'd be the easiest, that'd be the fiercest debate in my life. We would go for first degree. If you're afraid of someone, do you taunt them? Do you call them names? Do you circle around them? Those are questions that you all can answer. Or an alternative hypothesis to them being terrified is do they do those things because they're drunk? What changed you to a higher conviction of first degree? Um, I think it's him. I think it's him having that knife out like 20 seconds before any fighting has even started. And I think it's him walking away and coming back to the group twice, knowing he has the knife on him. That's, he knows what's up. You know what's going on here. Teenagers. Oh, and then also going through the video stuff with Gistical and seeing that like the kids like attacking him was like nothing. That his face was never pushed into the water and they're not, nobody's holding him down or anything like that, that none of that actually happened. I don't, I don't think it, and, and then also looking at his reactions before, during and after, I don't think he looks like a person that was ever in fear of his life at any point during that. Not a single time he didn't seem like he was fearful of anything. Um, and then the actions afterwards are also highly sus. Oh yeah, his lack of injuries or marks. The fact that he said the only injury he had was he bit his inner cheek. Yeah, I think it's too, it's too much. It's so much in favor of him just like he wanted to fight. And what they want to do is make a video and put it on the air. Which one of those two things, based on the evidence that you've seen, which one of those things makes more sense to you? The second thing that I think is in dispute, or was at least raised in the first minute and 49 seconds of that video, is whether or not Nick Muse looking for little girls. Now, Mr. Anderson gets up here and says, no, he wasn't looking for little girls. But he also says, the boys didn't invent that. No. So the fight part of fight or flight doesn't exist in your world? What do you think fight or flight means? They pretty much invented that. And why do we, or how do we know that? So that's not on video anywhere, right? They don't mention it, they don't say anything about Nick Mew telling them that, right? Every one of them who speaks to the police provides a statement about what happened. Zero. Zero mention to the police that he said he was looking for little girls. This gentleman over here, Investigator Schultz, I think he said that he was a sensitive crimes investigator. He saw some of this stuff come across his desk, and that would have interested him. Investigator did testify. He said if he would have mentioned if any of these kids would have mentioned little girls. A rational person would defend himself against six, six college-age kids pushing him, calling him. No, a rational person would just wouldn't go over there. Or when their kids are starting to get rowdy, rowdy, a rational person would have just continued to walk away. He wouldn't have come back. A person does not grab a knife out in front of a college-aged or high school girl and hold his knife out ready to fight and stab everybody around him. That's not a rational, ordinary person. That's wild. That's a, that's a killer, Chief. I would have taken note of that. So... What's the alternative? Why did they say that? I would submit to you that what kind of person does what these kids did to him and what would they look like? You recognize this attorney from Rittenhouse? Yes. If all they people did so, yeah. was pick a guy out <clears throat> and start to torment him. What do we think of people who do that? <clears throat> what do we think of how could he have known if he turned his back to walk away, he wouldn't have gotten attacked? That's a fantasy delusion that exists in your mind that everybody would assume instantly you would get attacked and murdered. But 
Also, I can defeat it by looking at the video evidence. He turns his back to this group of people several times. So he didn't even have that fear. You're projecting, you're inventing. I don't know if it's because you were a cock in high school or you were like a thin or fat dude in college and you like empathize with the guy being surrounded by like the chads, the 20% that are fucking the 80% are terror. I don't know where your mind goes, but like, I don't even have to, I don't even have to argue that you could turn your back to the kids and walk away because he turns his back to the kids several times in the video. Like he does it. He's not worried at any point. You can see it. it's very obvious. Again, like a guy that's scared or a guy that's like in fear of his life is not just like looking around like calmly like a group of people. He would be like trying to back away or trying to create distance or trying to move back or trying to run away or whatever. Or he would just be attacking because he's like, fuck, I'm going to die, right? Not like sitting here waiting like it's a fucking Hollywood movie for the fighting to begin. Like. Of people who call grown men rapers and pedophiles and predators for kicks. What do we what do we think of those people? They had to come in and say that. Cuz if they don't, we know what we think of them. That's the reason they came in and they said this to you guys under oath. They got on that witness stand and swore to tell the truth and they told you that he said he was looking for little girls. Well, the cops got up under oath and told you, no, nah, they never mentioned that to me. What are the odds? What are the odds that that actually happened and nobody mentions it to the police? What are the odds? Two other little points on that. In your everyday experiences in life, would you expect a man that you never met to walk up to you and say, if you ask him, how's your day? What are you doing? Oh, I'm looking for little girls. Would you expect someone to actually do that? Does that make any sense to you? He's with his wife. There, he has lunch with his wife and his friends. In order to believe what these drunk teenagers are saying, you have to believe that he has lunch with his wife, he's with his friends, they're having a fine time. Ariel loses his phone, and Nick goes, this is my chance. My wife's right over there, but this is my chance to go look for little girls. And I'm gonna tell a bunch of drunk teenagers I've never met before, that's what I'm doing. Tell me that makes sense to you. Because you get to judge the credibility. What does this have to do with self-defense and stabbing, killing people? Well, for the defense here, you want to present the holistic story of your client, the time of like the stabbing, everything that's happening before. You're, you're just, this is just like the complete and total overview of your narrative, of your spin or your side of the facts of what's happened. That's the point is the defense is presenting the cohesive, strongest version of their case of what happened. And the idea is to present to the jury that like, this is at least plausible, right? It's possible that this happened, right? Because remember, the jury needs to have a beyond a reasonable doubt con conviction of mind um, to say that he should be charged with whatever crime, right? So the goal is just to prevent or to present a compelling alternative explanation for what could have happened. And as long as there's at least like a two or 3% chance that, yeah, sure, then you should vote not guilty. Of what people have said to you, okay? But I wanna talk about what we know in that first minute and 49 seconds of the video. What do we know? We know based on- Is this called a straw man? What? No, the closing statements are you steel manning your position and then the other guy will steel man his position. What do you mean? Evidence that Nick's looking for a phone. We know that. Ariel said that, Nick said that. They find Ariel's phone in the river. So we know that. We know that Nick comes up to the teenager's tubes and we know that Cockfield, you're looking for a phone and Cockfield's holding the phone. Joanne Cockfield's holding the phone. We know that Nick Mew walks away from them as he passes them. We know that. We know, right, that the drunk teenagers move toward him. So you don't think there is a 2% chance that he was in fear for his life? No, no, no. To prove the to prove the self-defense claim, 
there is a 51% burden on the defense to prove the self-defense thing. I don't think 51%, I don't believe that I have 51% feeling that he was acting in self-defense. My feelings on that would be like less than 10%, less than 5% maybe. They have to prove um, a balance of probabilities, I think, is the expression or whatever. What's it called in civil court in the US? Beyond a reasonable, balance of probabilities what they say in the UK. What's it called in the US? Destiny clearly never been surrounded by aggressors in his life. Lucky for him. Okay, technically I have been, okay, on video, on fucking stream. Nice try. But also, secondly, who the fuck are you? I'm sorry, Mr. Member in YouTube chat? What, are you on the streets fighting for your life every fucking night? What do you mean? <clears throat> oh, preponderance of evidence might be? And start confronting him. We know that. We also know that Nick sees what he believes to be a reasonable rep. Were you strapped during that interaction? Fuck no. If I had a gun, I wouldn't have been in that interaction. That would be fucking wild. Hell no. Because the chance of somebody dying increases a ton. <clears throat> this is cringe. I'm not. Or somebody dying. <laughs> Fuck. I'm not. I don't want to listen to myself. No, all these dudes were incredibly aggressive. What do you mean? These guys fucking hated us. And these guys were like screaming at us to like fucking leave and blah, blah, blah. Like all the crazy fucking Trump people or whatever. But like if I had a firearm, I, would, I wouldn't take a firearm and do an event like this. Because why the fuck am I going to surround myself with a bunch of people that are like pushing us and like telling us to leave and shit? Because the chances again of somebody dying, like if somebody hits me here, then I get hit. Whatever. Fuck it. Right. But if somebody hits me and I have a gun and somebody sees I have a gun or whatever, then shit gets crazy. At that point, it would be wild to... to um, it would be wild to like just start <laughs> blasting people here. National adult. So he heads over there to talk to her. And what we know is you can see his thumb. He's motioning back, trying to explain what happened. And we know that Madison Cohen, who knows nothing, if what the defense said is true, he didn't need to run away, and the situation clearly kept escalating. Your only excuse is he should have walked away, but there is no duty to do so. Just because you don't have a duty to walk away, we're not arguing whether or not he had a duty to walk away. That's not the question in this case. The question is, is did he have a right to stab five kids? That's the question. Or stab the five people attacking him they're not, they're from 17 to 22 or whatever. That's the question. Did he, have, did he have the right to stab five people? He doesn't have an obligation to walk away. But in factoring whether or not he had the right to stab people in front of him, you do consider if he could have walked away. Explicitly so. That's a thing that you are allowed to consider. Um, that is a thing you are allowed to consider. <laughs> About what happened? Zero starts screaming at him to leave. We know that Madison Cohen feels comfortable enough to put her hands on him for the first time and move him because, well, she's queen of the river and she decides where people go. <coughs> so she's moving him, we know that. We know that Nick is uncomfortable so he waves for his group to come over because the state can say whatever they want. He's by himself. So we know Nick does that. We know that when Nick waves to his group, so does Madison Cohen. But there's one big difference here. Her group shows up. <coughs> And they show up in numbers. We know that the group of teens are brave. And as this is going on, they start taunting this man who's done nothing to them. We know that. We know that Riley Mad Madison comes over and now she thinks it's necessary because she's been anointed something in the river and she gets to tell him where to go. 
Destiny is such a hypocrite. I can't tell. I can't tell. It's got to be. It's got to be low social. It's got to be people just you've never been in any social situation before, or you haven't even watched videos on the internet. You don't even have to be a social person. You just have to be retarded, I guess. Destiny is such a hypocrite. Now those are kids, but he was talking about how underage Palestinian kids could be terrorists. If you watch the whole video, and I hate to do this, but like retrospectively, I know that I'm right, uh, which is unfortunate because maybe I'm just going by what we saw happen. It clearly wasn't a group of super violent people. That's, it's just like, it's painfully obvious, right? It's super obvious, right? Not only did nobody like attack him for real ever, the push on the back was weak. The slap on the face was weak. It didn't even leave a fucking mark. The touching the guy's throat and pushing back was weak. Didn't even leave bruises, right? As soon as people saw fucking stab wounds and shit, what happened? Like people didn't go crazy. People didn't like start like attacking more. They were all like, oh, what? Bro, it was a group of people that were like drinking and being fucking stupid. That was it. Like, and I literally, yeah, just 17 to 20 year old people that were just drinking, whatever. And like people were like, oh, he touched a girl. Like these are just kids like acting dumb. This was not like a, this is not like you're outside and there's like some bad dudes up to no good surrounding an innocent guy for no reason. And they look, they're about to fuck shit up. It just wasn't this, it at all. But I mean, again, maybe like if you only hung out with one other person at most in your entire life, maybe you don't know what groups of people hanging out look like or what the energy is like or whatever. But like this, like it was super clearly not that at any point in time. So we know that she puts her hands on him. We know that Nick's uncomfortable enough that he waves the group over a second time, trying to get someone to come to his aid. We know that. We know that. What? They just watched as he was stabbing their friends? They didn't know he had a knife, my dude. Yes. They didn't know that he had a knife. <coughs> Madison Cohen pushes him, puts her hands on him. Again, he tells her not to touch him, but she does it anyway. We know at that point it's 13 against one. The other thing that we know, because we heard it was someone in the group, the brave group of six, tells Nick and you, you got 10 seconds. In your everyday experiences in life, when someone tells you that you have 10. What would have happened after the girls escalated it by making it a fight if he didn't have a knife? Do you think all the boys would have acted the same without the knife? They would all jump him? My dude. Fuck. I had a topic on this for my thing because I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like how I want to ban people. Normally I ban people. Like my thought is that like your thought is so stupid and, and low IQ that I don't want you infecting the community. Like I don't even want people to read in my community the retarded shit that you would be saying. Cause I'm worried that somebody might think like, oh God, that might be a good idea. Cause it's, it's beyond retarded. Like I don't think you're, I don't even think you should be dealt with in a, in, a, in a reasonable way in my community setting. And an outside community or like as something else, like yeah, but not within. Like that's such a stupid fucking thing to say, right? So again, we can go and we can just watch the video. Like, hold on. Somebody link me the video again. Or, I mean, I'll tell you what happened, but I like to watch it again just to prove my point for the timeline. But, Destiny, what would have happened after the girls escalated by making it a fight if he didn't have a knife? Firstly, if he didn't have a knife, he wouldn't have walked back. He would have left. Because he would have saw that they were like rowdy kids and he doesn't need to be, he would have left. He only went back because he had the knife and he knew that if shit started to go down, he could start stabbing people. Number one, if he didn't have the knife, uh, he would have just left. 100%, number one. And then number two, when you say, do you think after he slapped the girl, you think all the boys would have acted the same without the knife? Yes. And you know why I know that? It's because even before they knew he had a knife, they were trying to get him to like chill and go away. That's exactly what happened. The guy that he turns around, after he turns around and he stabs the, what, the 18 year old, 105 pound girl in her fucking side, he didn't turn around and stab the next dude because he did a flying roundhouse kick to the back of his head. He didn't turn around and counter with a quick jab because the guy punched him in the back as hard as he could. He didn't shake a dude off him and stab him in the neck because the guy was like trying to strangle him. He turned around to a guy that had his hand on his back and was like, it seemed like he was just trying to tell him to leave. The guy just, he put his hand on his back. Like he like was saying, like, hey bro, like you should leave. And that's before he even knew a knife was there. So for you to say like, oh no, they would have jumped and killed him. Why? Why wouldn't he have just hit him right there? He didn't even know the dude had a knife and he was just trying to like touch him and tell him to leave. Like, so no, like 
every argument that you have, I don't even have to guess or project or do anything. We can just watch the video and every single thing you're saying is not true. You either haven't seen the video or you're living in a state of psychosis and you can't interpret like the events that you're seeing right in front of your eyes because for whatever reason, this particular case has mind fucked you. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Jesus Christ. What did the old guy do originally to get assaulted before the stabbing? S -s Smacked a girl in the face. <laughs> I mean... Why do you keep saying the college kids were rowdy as if it is an excuse for putting their hands on Nico? It's not a... Because there's a difference between a bunch of people being rowdy and a bunch of people, like, going after a dude. Those are two completely different energies and completely different crowds. That's an iffy at best, Destiny, from testimony. That's what every single person there testified to, no? Didn't multiple people testify that he hit the girl? The kid with his hand on his back was sent over by his dad because his dad worried for the old guy's safety. He testified as a witness. Oh, I didn't even see that part of the thing if that was true, but... Destiny keeps saying he hit her when it's unproven. This feels out of character for him. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. So will Destiny admit that he is mind fucked? Okay, hold on. Never mind. We're getting rid of that. We're not talking about bands. Forget that. <laughs> these, are, these are good bands. Will Destiny admit... That, I'll respond to you before I ban you, though. Will Destiny admit that he's mind fucked when the decision is not guilty? I won't admit that because I've said a million times it's a jury trial. Anything can happen. I said the same thing with Rittenhouse. I said the same thing with any jury trial. This is why people usually like to settle before trial because nobody knows how a jury will rule. A jury could rule fucking anything. And I've disagreed with juries before. Juries are not like Supreme Court justices. They're not like the most like law abiding, law understanding, whatever fucking people in the land. It's just a jury. That's it. I disagree with the verdict where that one guy was allowed to shoot the dude that was in the mall, like holding the phone into his face. I thought it was a wild ruling because the jury rules one way or another should never mind fuck you unless you're a fucking retard. Like. <clears throat> Wait, he actually hit her before? Um, that That's what... Can we... do? If you want, we can look during the court. God, this is such a boring fuck case. I hope that he does walk. I hope he walks so that it's at least a little bit more interesting. Because if he, if he gets convicted on everything, it's just like the most boring, obvious fucking case in the fucking world. Um, my God. Why are people so defensive of this? I have no idea, bro. It's either self-defense fantasy or it's like they see a fat old dude getting hit by a bunch of chads and they're just like, my God, I have no idea. It's a, it's a, it's like such an obviously wild, um, it, all of this is so obviously wild. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. I might be stupid by expecting most drunk mobs like that to escalate, but still first degree is too much. Maybe he snapped and it's second degree. I think it's either first degree or it's self-defense. I don't know how you do second degree here. Like, he, uh, is it just going to be this dog shit fucking court video? Like they're shouting at him, walk away, walk away. Let's see if we can find exactly when he pulls his knife out. It's before he walks back to the group. They're saying, walk away, walk away. Other people Who come that? chat or whatever. Who the hell is this? Go. Go. It doesn't matter. Go. 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 He said he was looking for a little girl. He said he was looking for a little girl. You're looking for a little girl. Yeah. Like people are like, he was surrounded and scared for his life. He can just walk away right now. He's like, he's not even near there. He just walk away. He's so easy to walk away right here. You just leave. Like why, why, what are we going back for? I didn't have that part on camera. Also, fear for his life? 
like this is this is the story you're selling right here. Fear. This is a man in fear for his life, waving at his friends. It fear fear for his life. Fear fear for his life right there. Fear for his life. Wait, did he already pull it? Oh, so there we are. At least at 149. I don't know if he got it out earlier. Nobody has even touched him yet. Nobody's laid a hand on him. They're shouting, yeah. My understanding is, unless I missed it at some other point, I'm not aware of it. Or maybe when the lady was talking to him, she might have touched his arm earlier. Nobody has touched him yet. And now he's pulled out a knife. Now it's time to start. Now we're in like lethal self-defense mode, right? So you can say, well, he's not in fear for his life yet. Then why is he brandishing a knife? Hold on. Destiny, he never claimed to be fearful until he was knocked down in the water. Cable K, if what you're saying is true, then this is first degree murder. If he wasn't fearful, but he's pulling out a lethal weapon at this point, and he's not fearful at all, and he's pulling out a knife to kill people, this is first degree. He's got it out. He knows, you know what happens when you stab people, and you're standing here, and you're ready to stab. Nobody's attacking him. Nobody's touched him. He didn't get pushed anywhere. Like, he didn't say that. He said it was when she touches him. Like, he's got plenty of opportunity to walk away. This is a guy who's scared, fear for his life. Fear of his life right now? Look, he wasn't even looking at these kids to his right. He was, you think if you're in fear of your life to a bunch of people to the right of you, you're just talking to, like, two women in front of you? Fear for his life? He's not even looking at him. And then finally, he turns his head. He's like, still got that knife out. It's in his hand. Here, there, the blade is just not out? Wait, What? This blade is not out? Is that just the design of the knife? That it looks like a blade is out when it's not? Destiny, most likely the college kids would have followed him to mess with him, even if Nikolai started walking away. Who, how, bye, see ya. Destiny, why'd you say he was brandishing the knife? It was quite subtle. If the kids saw him waving it around, they would probably off maybe why didn't he wave it around but i say brandish because he's pulled out a knife now to use it in a i guess technically does i should keep saying brandishing i guess you could say silently withdrew the knife or silently drew the knife brandishing might technically only be threatening with the weapon i don't know if he's intending to threaten with it or not because he keeps holding it down here and brought attention to it okay i guess he's drawn a knife then i feel like drawn drawing a weapon secretly is an even worse look though because now you're not even now you're not even using it as like a stay back or stay away. Now it's like, a, especially because he keeps walking back, he equipped his knife. Like everybody, like these are the people he's in fear of his life for, right? Like, bro, they're not even like, nobody's surround, like, and this is also just to go surrounding. They're surrounding him 280 degrees, 280 degrees surrounding. This is like, is this 90 degrees or is this and maybe like maybe like 120 in front of him like you've got this kid looks like he's jerking off this kid is like giving an impassioned speech this guy looks like a douchebag this guy's asian and fat this dude i don't even know is like recording a fucking ho like he's not even looking at the guy fear for his life right here Fear for his life. And then supposedly, does anybody have a link to actual witness testimony? What's been said here is that like here he hits the girl or pushes her or does something. Destiny, they are calling him a pedophile and raper. Sure, they can do that, but it obviously signals that they are hostile. You can attack chatters personally, but it doesn't refute an argument. I don't have to refute your argument because the defendant agrees with me. He's not scared. He's obviously not scared. This is the, none of these actions are the actions of a scared man. Oh 
He didn't make any attempt to walk away earlier when he was away from them. He didn't, he doesn't, he's not showing any signs of fear right now. Pulled a knife out and walked back to start talking to people. Like, I totally agree that this isn't a case of self-defense, but how much of this do you think is play stupid games, win stupid prizes? You could argue all of it is. The worst prize one would be the kid that got killed, but then the second worst prize would be this guy if he gets convicted of life in prison. <laughs> Like, fear of his life, by the way. Fear of his life, by the way. <laughs> Still not trying to run away, by the way. Still not trying to run away. So I already stabbed one person, right? Not trying to run away at all at this point. Kids aren't even, like, really looking at him. Not making- they're not even looking at him. Look, like, this guy's, like, pointing at his friend. This other kid is who knows how far away. These guys are, like, over 10 feet away at this point. Who's even in striking distance at this point? Then he turns around. I think, does he- did he just stab this girl? I think he just stabbed her. And then you guys, remember you guys were saying, like, they probably would have attacked him. They probably would have attacked him. They Look, this guy has a clear shot. If he wanted to beat the shit out of him, like, it's over right here. Boom. That's a clear shot. What does he do? He just puts his hand on his back. Like, hey, bro, like, you should leave. Or like, hey, bro, this is like, whatever. And then, whoop, stabbed. Not trying to run. Not trying to escape. You know, just chilling. Looking for more targets. Oh, this guy comes in. Whoop. Another one. Oh, he's... Ooh. Oh, he doesn't stab that guy. Good job. <laughs> As a genuine question, do you put much value in the age slash size of the kids? How would much... Uh, how much would it change the dynamic if they were 40 or 100, 200 plus pounds? Uh, it might change it a little bit, but this guy's bigger than everybody else here, bro. This is a big f***ing dude. This is a big guy. He might even be the tallest one here. <laughs> I think there's like one decently built guy here. All these other kids are lanky fucks or they're just like fucking, not to be mean to him or whatever, but it's not like he's surrounded by a group of like 220 pound, 6'2", 10 to 12% body fat chads or whatever. Like he stabbed him when he was pushed, not when hand went on back, but the guy who died might've seen orange guy die. No, 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 hold on. I don't think you're right there. I'm pretty sure he did stab the guy right when he put his hand on the back. Um. All right, let me go and check again. Oh, shit. I didn't even hear that before. This guy is, this guy's actually super trying to de-escalate, I think. Did he just scream, get the f back? Was he the one that said that? Did I hear that or am I making that up? <laughs> oh, he does and then he pushes him. It, chat, remember, he just, I think it looked like he just pushed his friend back. Remember, in chat's eyes, his friend can now stab this dude to death because he pushed him, okay? Because he pushed him, he can be stabbed to death now, remember, okay? You're saying you don't think he stabbed him here, or he did? Do we know for sure? Or do you think he just stabbed him here? I guess the question is, how many stab wounds did this guy have? Oof. Did he have one or two? Which guy died? Uh, people are saying there was this guy in the jeans thing or whatever. That's a different guy. The guy who broke up the fight was stabbed twice. Wait, isn't that this guy right here? Isn't this the guy that's trying to break up the fight?
Also, his interrogation video, he says they had knives. They were pulling his pants down. He says he took the knives from them. Yeah, that's he lied. <laughs> yeah. The dude you're referring to blocked the first hit, but not the second one. A woman? Like he's still and he's still ready to fight, bro. Like look at this guy. A woman? A woman. A is that is the guy in the America shorts over here? Is that his friend or is it just like an unrelated guy? Like he's still not running. Like ha where there's at no point. I don't think at any point in this. Maybe when he initially gets pushed down a little bit, is he like genuinely in fear for his life? He just doesn't act like it anywhere. Doesn't happen. The reason he does not stab Flag Shorts guys is because he is his friend. Oh, so that is his friend? Jesus. What if the river was working with the kids? True. I think as soon as he was pushed into the water, the adrenaline kicked in, and that's when he stabbed anyone who touched him afterwards. <laughs> okay. What does Destiny expect someone fearing for their life to act? Old guys aren't agile, so they're not going to be running through the water. He is constantly surveilling the people around him. Bye. He's not constantly surveilling the people around him. He turns his back to some people, he talks to other people, he pulls out a knife and he fights. You might, he doesn't have to run away, he could just be walking away. At no point is he walking away. He's in a combat position, ready to fight, continually re-engages, he's ready to go, bro. Nothing about this sells you the idea that there's a person in fear for their life. And then to sell it even harder, afterwards, he walked across the riverbank, he hid his knife, he tried to ditch it on the other end of the river, he goes back to his inner tube, he puts on his hat and his glasses, and he floats on down the river, and then he acts stupid when the cops show up, and then he says like five or six different fucking lies to them about what happened. Somebody got stabbed? I didn't hear about that. Oh, I saw some boys fighting, maybe they stabbed each other. Oh, knife? That came from them they had they had that thing oh i i i guess i matched the description of someone who stabbed somebody uh like yeah what does fear for your life even look like then what do you what does it look like it i mean there's when somebody's in uh fear for their life there's a lot of things that can happen um I, usually people try to protect their front usually people uh do there are, are like certain motions that people do so for instance um if i if somebody's standing in front of somebody okay and they look like this right you have an open posture generally not a lot of fear there right people tend to uh cower a little bit or they tend to like protect or cover areas you typically don't turn your back to people that you're incredibly uh like if you think they're about to kill you or whatever or if you are it's to run right it's just to turn your back and run um but like the idea of like standing confidently talking to people you're in fear for your life of these people next to you no none of this there's absolutely no point there's no attempt to escape or retreat there's no attempt to shout or scream for help he's not shouting or screaming even though he's got friends on the river you might see that somebody like calling for help like help blah 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 nothing like that um uh, an attempt to show people that you have a weapon stop i've got a knife get away from me stop 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 not like any of these actions there's a million different things that people do when they're afraid or they're scared or they're worried or whatever but not like pull out the knife chat with some people you have blah 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 blah, and then start stabbing no he seems fully where fully within his control the entire fucking time all for literally all of it yeah <clears throat>
okay. What do people think defending, um, what do the people defending him think would have happened if he didn't have the knife? Would the kids have beaten him? Well, they think that it's reasonable to expect that the kids would have killed him, I guess, yeah. But the reality is, again, um, the reality is, again, that uh, if he didn't have the knife and he did fear for his life, he just wouldn't have walked back. He wouldn't have walked back to the kids. It's so easy. It's like so easy. It's such an easy, simple case. It's so easy and simple. What a waste of time. Okay, we're doing our dailies. Uh, hopefully they figure the verdict out by tomorrow so we can move on from this incredibly fucking retarded case. Would it be harder for the prosecution to be given himself to the police after with the weapon and admit he stabbed kids that he thought were going to harm him? Yeah, of course. His post-stabbing behavior is it's probably it's probably the definitive incriminating thing. What was the building stream segment schedule going to be? Um, I need to figure out how to do, um, I need to figure out how to do just like an hour or two of new stuff. I just don't know what to, I don't know how to figure this out. There has to be some big content creators out there defending this debate. There's literally no point. Um, this is a, this is a brain rot conversation. <sighs> Have you seen this video in the police station? No, I didn't watch. I didn't watch this. I don't, I hate this. I hate this. Such a dumb case. Kill me, bro. So why have Can you pull your chat for guilty, not guilty? Do you think he's guilty of either first or second degree murder or not guilty by way of self-defense? I'm sure this has been said, but one of the defense attorneys was the same for Rittenhouse, the bald one. It's been said about 50 billion times so far. Yes. Wow, good job. We've banned everybody that thinks not guilty. 20% more to go. Destiny, does it look like he provoked them at all? Uh, yes, I think, I think, yeah. I think it was, I, I, if I'm, I don't even want to say I'm being charitable or generous, but it seems like he did provoke them, but it was probably by accident. I'm assuming it must've been by accident. But the, um, I think him like falling forward and like putting his hands on like the tube or whatever if you were looking around probably looked really fucking weird and the, i think that's when the first kid recording like freaks out a little bit because the guy like comes forward and he's like touching his leg or whatever on that thing but i'm assuming he just tripped probably but do 
Do you like watching controversial cases or do you specifically like self-defense because you know it well? I don't think I know any criminal stuff necessarily well. Do you like watching controversial cases? Not that much, no. Actually, I don't. I hate this because um, I don't feel like there's ever an evaluation of the fact pattern. I feel like there is a... Um, uh, it's just basically whatever people... It's just whatever is fitting people's like preconceived notions or biases. Like the Rittenhouse thing went well for me because... I don't even know if you could say that it did just because... The people that watch me tend to be center left anyway, so they're primed a little bit to hear self-defense arguments, and then people on the right are going to defend Rittenhouse literally no matter what the fuck he did. They don't actually give a fuck about any of the facts of that case, which is demonstrated here, right? So many people comparing Rittenhouse to this show is that a lot of the people that supported Rittenhouse had no fucking idea what even happened in that fucking case. They just knew it was a conservative that blew away two or three BLM guys, so they thought it was fucking epic, and they supported him for it. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, state made a good argument. Mui puts his snorkel in his mouth right before he trips. He was just grabbing their tubes. Do you really think that that was the goal there? I, that's, you could read it that way, but I don't. Why would him putting his snorkel on first, like, signal that? Bro. What is he on? Whoa! Whoa! Like, I'm assuming here he tripped. He must have, right? Um, at Destiny, I think you're being unfair. There are quite a large number of people with very maximalist views on self-defense. I don't think it's a lack of principles. If you have a maximalist view on self-defense and you think you should be able to defend yourself in any case where you feel like there could be a threat, then do you agree that these two kids should have been allowed to stab or shoot him to death when he fell forward and, and got literally right in their space and put his hands forward? I could say, somewhat ironically, what if he had a weapon on him? But he actually did, right? Like he could have literally drew it and stabbed them right here. So if you have a maximalist view on self-defense and you think you have the right to stab him, do you agree then? Would you say that they had a right to kill him right here when he comes forward and boom, right in there? Because he could be pulling in a knife right now and stabbing and killing this guy, right? Like, stupid. Can you tell me what happened? Yeah. Um... Four people went to the hospital. The state also pointed out a still frame of him touching his knife in his pocket to check it's there as he's running up to them. No shot. Wait, hold on. Wait, are you the same guy that used that maximal self-defense view? Destiny, I think that if it had been, that if he had had the knife out at that point, or if he had been accompanied by multiple others approaching in an aggressive manner, then yes, they would have been just right. So you don't have a maximalist view on self-defense. What do you mean? You're telling them to be, they, he doesn't need multiple people to kill people at this point. Can you admit in good faith that he could be killing somebody right now? He's violated their personal space. He has a weapon on him. He's literally leaning in between two kids. He could pull his knife out right now and kill both of them. So what do you mean? You don't have a maximalist view on self-defense then, or... Why is this even getting that much car? I don't know, bro. Okay, where is this... Is it right here? Is that where we're reading into this? Oh, well. Huh? Is he squeaky? He is, right? I mean, he may, he could be pulling his shorts up. He could be pulling his shorts up, right? Do we say, could we... I, I don't think we can say he's like for sure like checking for his knife here. I don't know if we know that. He could literally, there's like a million things. Swimwear is awkward. I think there's a million things that could be happening here. Do we even know if his knife was in that pocket? Uh, yeah, well, 
we don't know for sure, but he's always holding it in his right hand. So it's possible he could have pulled it out of his left pocket and then put it in his right hand, but. And then he starts kind of running here. I don't know what the fuck is happening here. Does he kind of trip or what the fuck is happening here? Who pulls their wet shorts up from their thigh? You pull them up around your waist? Yeah, maybe if you're a Superman. Pulling wet shorts up around your waist is like impossible. If your shorts are all completely wet and stuck to your leg, you've gotta like pull it up. Otherwise you're dragging your like stuck to your body shorts up from your like, I feel like it's impossible. I don't even know if you can do it. It is clipped in that low pocket. He doesn't equip the snorkel. He just holds it in his mouth to free up his hands. Yeah, but like that's normal, right? Snorkels are uncomfortable as fuck to wear. Why the fuck would you put a snorkel on r until right before you go in the water? I, like I wouldn't expect anybody to put it on immediately, right? I was with Destiny 100% till that comment. Has nobody gone? I can't tell if I'm if I'm getting trolled or not. Has anybody had wet clothes before? If you're trying to take off like a wet t-shirt, do you just pull from here and yank it off? You don't, you have to like fucking wrestle with all the fucking shit all over your body because it's stuck to you like a motherfucker. What are we talking about? I can't tell if I'm getting trolled. But this is not a wet t-shirt? No, but if you've got like, depending on the types of swimwear you're wearing, if it's like shorts that are like stuck to your whole fucking thigh, I don't think you would pull from your waistband to pull them up. You have to reach down and you like unscrunch them from your body and then you pull it up. Am I crazy? But it also depends on the type of swim trunks you have. Some swim trunks will have like the, um, the white, like the fucking net lining beneath. And those you can always like pull up or down like without anything, but it depends on what you're wearing, right? I don't know the fuck kind of, I don't know what the fuck this guy's swimwear is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's literally just water. It's not that much heavier. I, that's gotta be a troll comment. It's gotta be, I can't, there's no way dude. What is he on? Everyone knows that you take your clothes off while you're in the water because they're harder to get out of once you're out of the I didn't even know that. That'd be a really good idea though. True. <laughs> you should just do that. So what happened? Can you tell me what happened? Yeah. Um... Four people went to the hospital with injuries. Oh my God. And uh, one person. Yeah, but there's no reason to assume he is pulling them up. What makes you think he isn't checking for the knife? He could be. I'm just trying not to ascribe more malintent than I already have, because apparently I'm already insane for thinking this guy that stabbed five teens was a little bit out of line. With injuries. Oh my God. And uh, one person died. Oh no. I don't know any of their names and I don't know any genders. So I, I don't what was that? What's your best feel for the stabbing guy's true motive? I don't know. He just seemed like he wanted to fight. Maybe he's a fighter, dude. I'm not sure. But anybody that walks back to a group of people and pulls a knife out like that is looking to fight. He was living his fucking hero moment. I don't know any of their names and I don't know any genders. So I, I don't was know. Was that because they fought each other or is that I the... I don't know. I don't know what their injuries are. I, I just, I was with Sandy the whole mm -hmm. time. And then when I kind of turned Sandy over to Ernesto and Amy, then I came here. So um, I, I, I have no idea what their injuries were. Oh my um, God. Oh my God. My God. Would your perspective change if he punched one and they died? Yeah, I think if you want to punch somebody because people are in your face, that's totally fine, sure. If he wants to hit somebody, sure. So we just need to be able to like piece this together. You know, in your statement. What other pictures did they give you or me? Just that one. That's the only one I have. They didn't take, they, well, they have lots of cameras. You should take their yep, camera. Yes, and so I have colleagues 
yeah. investigators that are that are talking to all of those, you know, the, the people in the group and the other witnesses. So yes, okay. we are we are trying to collect. And I told them that so and Amy, because um, they said that uh, Rosie. Rosie, yeah. Pictures? yeah. Okay. But um, I don't think she took any pictures of those guys. They well, were so at the at the stop at the stop up here. Yes, but yeah. you were you were snorkeling. They might have been like taking oh, a picture or something, see, and yeah, yeah, we could have gotten yeah, we yeah. could get these guys yeah. in the background that they don't even realize they have it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. So I asked them to go through their photos. Right, so that right, we would right, be right. Um, yeah, in contact yeah, with got them. Got it. Got it. I, I was all of a sudden you say that. Like, I feel like the thing Destiny missed is the lies told by the kids. What did what lies did the kids tell? Did I miss some of that? They might have maybe they lied about some of the story. I'm not even relying on like any of their testimony. Though. I'm just relying on like what's been seen on camera. I guess the only bit of testimony I'm relying on is that the kids say that the girl got punched. But I think they believe that that happened because they react in the video like she did. That's maybe they miss saw it or something. But why would they take pictures of me going over there? No, you just never know what you get in a picture. Yeah. If you're if they're sitting here waiting for you mm -hmm. and and uh yeah. how do you also find the phone did you, did you find his phone matt walsh showed it the kids told tons of lies oh boy okay well there we go um i don't know again i was i've been with sandy pretty much the whole time and now i came here with you so i do know i i, I did get a message that the goggles from the snorkel were found um so that's all the information that i have about like items that were located This fucking noise. No, my the lies are about the kids calling the dude a pedo and a raper? Oh, that has nothing to do with... That's not... Who cares? That's... Yeah, that, I mean, they shouldn't have said that, but that's different than the lies that he's telling, talking to the cops. <laughs> right. They're down the tubes. Well, I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Because people have the right to defend themselves. I know, but this is, oh, this is Wisconsin. This is Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh-oh. Okay. Because... Now, my whole life is down the tubes. Well, I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Because people have the right to defend themselves. I know, but this is, oh, this is Wisconsin. This is Wisconsin. Okay. You continue on. I, okay. I, I, I usually know that people that, that defend them. What is it? Does he look up? Has he looked up the laws in advance? She's trying a form of like soft, like agreeing, like, I, I think, right? People have a right to defend themselves, like trying to get him to admit something. This is like amateur hour interrogation, though. But also it's like... They have the video, but the video, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I guess there's a whole hour. Fuck, should we watch this? Oh, we should just wait for the JCS video on it. So they end up. Maybe he's asking because this happened right on the border between Wisconsin and Minnesota. Oh, that could be it too. If they're like right on the border, he's not sure which state he's in. That's possible. Being accused of being this and being that. Well, I think if you'd asked me what I would have done. Yeah, I, mean, not I don't know. Enough. Yeah, you don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I would have been scared shitless, I can tell you that. When, when that many people yeah. Yeah, tried to... At this point, she doesn't know anything. She's just taking his initial story. Um, That's possible, but that is definitely not what this feels like. It feels like she knows she has a pretty good idea of what happened, just based on her questioning and the fact that she's trying to be um, sympathetic towards why he would stab people. It feels like she knows he stabbed them and he, she's trying to get him to admit it. That's what it feels like. But maybe she doesn't know. I don't, I don't know the, I don't know how quickly after everything this interrogation happened or whatever, so I could be wrong, but. Pull your pants down and hit you and yeah. And two, two, two boys had knives on them. They didn't find any of those two knives? I, I don't know. I don't know, but we're looking. And oh, he's trying to say that they were knife fighting each other, and he's like, "Did they find the knives? Did they find the knives? Did they find the knives?" <laughs> oh man, is that what? Being accused of being this and being that. Well, I think if you'd asked me what I would have done, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Enough. Yeah, you don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I would have been scared shitless. I can tell you that. When, when that many people yeah. Yeah, tried to pull your pants down and hit you, and yeah. And two, two, two boys had knives on them. 
Uh, they didn't find any of those two knives? I, I don't know. I don't know, but we're looking. And, you know, we're looking before it gets dark out. Um, Oh, it must be the adrenaline because he's still in fear of his life. The fight or flight is causing him to hallucinate two knives from the other boys and invent the fact that they were pulling his pants down. Okay, right now we're 40. I'm glad I actually took that kid from the knife. He would have stabbed me. He was not there to scare me. Am I hearing things? He Can't was there to harm me. Okay, it's background in this video. Jesus. At least I'm, I'm here. But I'm sorry for what, what, it, how it ended up. <laughs> Careful. triggered am I about to get? So there aren't a lot of guarantees in the criminal justice system, but for a long time now, there's been at least one thing you could be pretty sure of, which is that if you kill somebody in self-defense, there's a very good chance in this country you're going to be charged with murder. Trayvon Martin called George Zimmerman a cracker right before pounding his head into the pavement, and famously, the entire country, including the President of the United States at the time, determined immediately that George Zimmerman was the bad guy. And of course, Kyle Rittenhouse was nearly, uh, near, very nearly had to spend the rest of his life in prison for the crime of defending himself against several people who were clearly trying to kill him, including a pedophile who just got out of a mental hospital and an Antifa foot soldier who drew a handgun on him. Now, everyone's heard of these cases because- Just as a heads up, okay? Just, I'm sorry, from a principled perspective, okay? From a principled perspective, this probably should be the case, okay? When you're defending yourself by killing another person, you're depriving that person of arguably the greatest negative freedom, meaning a freedom that you have intrinsically that the government is just protecting, and that is your right to life, okay? So for another citizen to be able to deprive you of the greatest negative freedom that ought to be protected and is protected in the U.S. Constitution or basically every country on the planet, okay? There should be some burden of, of, of proof that you have to present that you had a right to do that. That's not ridiculous. That's not fantastic. That should be expected. The idea that it's so crazy that if one man kills another, that he doesn't have to answer to some criminal body to prove that it was with some level of justification is such an unbelievably stupid f***ing issue to have. Like, you, obviously, that should be the case. You should always be prepared to defend yourself in court if you kill somebody in real life including a pedophile who just got out of a mental hospital and an Antifa foot soldier who drew a handgun on him. Now, everyone's heard of- It's like, a pedo- Like, it's not even good. Oh, why am I watching this? Rittenhouse didn't know anybody was a pedophile. That guy could have been a pedophile or could have been the Pope. It doesn't change the facts of that case. It's all perspective. Rittenhouse didn't know any of this at the time, so it doesn't matter what comes out afterwards. It's not retrospective. You kill him, including a pedophile who just got out of a mental hospital and an Antifa foot soldier who drew a handgun on him. Now, everyone's heard of these cases because in both instances, there was a very clear racial angle to push. Now, even though he didn't kill any black people, the Kyle Rittenhouse incident happened, of course, in the context of BLM mobs torching cities. So they had that angle, and, and that's why he became an instant target. George Zimmerman, for his part, gave Barack Obama a chance to talk about how systemically racist America is. So his case was useful uh, for a moment as well. But there are many self-defense cases that don't make the mainstream news, at least not nearly to the same extent. And all of them, to one degree or another, contradict the prevailing media narrative. So the corporate press ignores them. But they're important to talk about, in part because they show how prosecutors and witnesses are willing to lie to imprison people who exercise one of the most fundamental rights. You might say the most fundamental, which is the right of self-defense. How casually they will destroy people's lives for the crime of trying to preserve their own lives. So I'm going to go in depth into one of uh, these cases, which is, which is still ongoing, hasn't gotten nearly as much attention as it deserves. And plus, it's the premiere day for judge. So I, you know, I figure a deep dive on a court case seems sort of fitting. So uh, here's the background. In the summer of 2022, a man in his early 50s named Nikolai Mu was out tubing with a group of people, including his wife. And this was in the Apple River in Wisconsin. Now, apparently, a, a member of his party uh, dropped their phone somewhere in the river, and Nikolai Mu left his group and went looking for the phone. And that's when, around 3.40 p.m., Mu encountered a couple of additional tubing groups, one consisting of a bunch of teenagers and the other including some adults. And most of the involved parties are uh, very clearly under the influence of alcohol and perhaps other drugs to varying degrees. And they began exchanging some words... And here's what happened next. Watch. Who is this? Yes! Yes! yes. For, the, for the concert! For the Wasn't the problem with Zimmerman is that he wasn't in danger at all? 
I don't know if Zimmerman would have become as sensationalized if not for the racial element. The racial element definitely played a role in it. But I thought that one of the more sensational aspects to the Zimmerman story was that he basically called 911, saying that he was chasing a f***ing kid through neighborhoods, and then eventually found him. They got into some altercation that nobody is recording of, and then he f***ing killed him. I think that the story was very sensational. Now, if it would have been two white people, would it have been as covered? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm sure, like, the fact that he was a black kid played into it to some extent, right? Because, I mean, it just does. But, like, it was still a... um. It was still a pretty, that, that, the, the fact pattern was pretty sensational. Um, call him out for cutting out the start of the video. I mean, it's whatever, dude. Birds, and here's what happened next. Watch. Who is this? Yes! 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 yes. For the, for the concert! Do you think the Zimmerman verdict was right? Um, I, I, I didn't look, I didn't dig into the case deeply enough, so I don't have a strong opinion about it. Um... Yeah, I don't even think I would trust what I've heard casually. It's too charged of a court case. I wouldn't trust any of you fucking retards to convey the information to me. I would have to go and I'd have to go and read through it like way deeper on my own. The I believe he saw a kid that he thought was suspicious, and then he called nine one one, and then I think he said he was going to pursue them. Nine one one said don't pursue, and then he did. But then the problem is at that point you've got a he said she said where an altercation ensues. Zimmerman, I think, had defensive wounds, but also, like, he could have started the... We don't know. We just don't know. I don't know. I don't have strong opinions on it. I don't, I don't know the... I didn't dig into all the testimony and everything enough, so... For the culture! Who is that? For the culture! Who is that? Who the hell is this? Go! Doesn't matter. Go! 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 Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what he said. We're gonna stop. I didn't have that part on camera. That's the hell is this guy's problem, bro? We're trying to have fun. Oh, 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 I feel like I'm watching it back. It's so much less. All of this is so much less than I. One thing that's like very interesting about reality is like, how different would this whole case be if this was captured um, horizontally instead of vertically? Because I, I wonder how much the vertical space crushes and compresses the image and gives you like this claustrophobic feeling so much more than what was actually happening. Like when I first watched this, there are so many impressions that I had about how close everybody was to him that like Gistical kept saying that he's surrounded 270 degrees, 280 degrees surrounded on all sides. And I wonder how much like the, the verticality of this video is like selling that talking point when like when you actually look at it. And there's another thing that I say like over and over again, like people like he was in fear for his life, fear for his life, fear for his life. Nah, you don't turn your back this hard to people like it fear for no shot with arms down, not covering, not protecting any part of his body completely turn around. He's not in fear of his life. But also, I don't think these people are as close to him as it as it as it kind of feels like with the camera waving back and forth so quickly. Like even when he turns around and sees him, he's not like surprised or shocked or like, oh, fuck, they're right. In my fellow oh, shit. He just like turns around. Yeah, he sees him. He's pretty mad. I think he's got his knife out. But then you like look in the water. This girl's got, she does have her hand on him here. On his arm, I think. And then he turns to talk to her. Oh, it looks like he's putting his hand on her or trying to push her back or getting her hand off him. I think she's telling him to leave is kind of what it looks like. But like, look at the space here. Like how many feet away do you think the recorder is here from the guy? There's like, there's nobody else's in frame, but also it's hard to see in frame. Guy walks a little bit closer. And then I keep, I keep thinking, I don't know, it's because people keep saying it. He's, he's being attacked by so many people. There's a mob of 13 people, 13 people, 13 people. But like, not really. There's two women in front of him. There's this guy holding a beer and pointing o over here. He's away from him. He's just talking to these two women. Like I said, this guy's not doing shit. This guy's like over here. That guy's over there. Like nobody, they're not, he's not really surrounded. People like on all sides or anything like this or anything. Like, they're laughing, they're being dumb. 
then something happens. Supposedly he pushes or hits this girl. I don't know. We should listen to what, what do the witnesses say here. So obviously everybody sees something happen. Maybe she hit him and they misinterpreted it if I'm being hyper charitable. But something happens here and at least these two guys see something. <laughs> The feeling here, after everything we just saw, is that like eight people are on him or attacking him or whatever, but that's not really what happened, right? I think the one guy walks up and smacks him. It was the guy that initially charged him or tried to push him over. And then this guy like kind of pushes his back, but like that's it in terms of hands on the guy. It was like those two people. Like I don't even know. And again, the feeling here is that like seven people are surrounding him like ready to fight, but I don't think they are. I bet if we had this shot wider, wait, somebody said there was a shot down river. Is there another video? I bet if you had this shot wider, I bet the feeling you would get from the video would be way different because I don't think anybody's that close to this dude at all. This guy, one guy comes up and he gets stabbed, but there's like nobody else is close enough to even touch him. I don't think anybody else is even striking distance right here. The guy in the camera is one thing. This guy is pretty far back. Like this guy's trying to break the fight up. None of these people are walking forward to attack him. Nobody's walking forward to hit him at this point. Nobody. Well, except apparently that 105 pound girl over there. I don't know if she hit him or if she just put her hands on him or what. We don't know, I think, right? Or I don't know what they testified to. But like this guy's trying to break break it up. He's trying to tell people like, hey, fuck off. I think he even says, get the fuck back. This kid is like back here, just whatever. There's a guy way back here. The video guy is still recording. This guy comes forward and he rests his hand on him to like, hey bro, like you should leave or whatever. I don't know if he stabs him here or what. I don't know if we've gotten a conclusive answer on this. I feel like people are drinking this so harshly purely because of the guy recording the video's commentary. I mean, the, I, yeah, I mean, the teens being fucking annoying, which they are, definitely plays into it. But I'm just, I'm so curious how much the, uh, the, the vertical filming here instead of the horizontal filming makes everything feel more claustrophobic than it actually was. Did you see the jury? There were a lot of old people in it. People keep saying an old person jury means one thing or another, but I don't think an old person jury means anything, right? Like, if the old person, um, if, if, if there are old people on the jury, they could be not sympathetic because, um, they could be not sympathetic uh, because, you know, they sympathize with the old guy or they empathize with the old guy and they don't like the teens, or they could be parents and now they're super set against them because, like, what if those were my kids getting stabbed in the river by some old creepy immigrant dude, right? So... What are your thoughts on the Arab Spring? I was in the Egyptian protest 2011. Brotherhood candidate won due to popular vote splitting between two popular candidates and a coup happened anyway. I don't, I don't have enough information. I have a comprehensive view of the Arab Spring. Now it's clear uh, from this footage that throughout the entire incident, right up until their friend got stabbed, the crowd of teenagers doesn't seem to be afraid of anything or feel fearful for their lives in any way. And, uh, and they seem to be having a great time. And, and, you know, that makes sense because Mu is much older than they are. And though they wouldn't have known this, he just had quadruple bypass surgery. So he wasn't out looking for, you know, a fight with a bunch of teenagers. Meanwhile, these teenagers are mostly football players in prime physical condition. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. How much of a self-report is this? Excuse me. Excuse me. Hold on. Let's let's find the uh, prime physical condition. Was it? Okay. First of all, we got like four fucking girls here. This is the. This is it. This is our specimen. Prime physical condition football player. Prime physical condition. Was it this guy over here? That guy in the friend group that brags about having a six pack because he weighs 102 pounds and he's five foot 10? Is it this guy back here, right over here? Who looks like he's like four Ukrainian flags in his profile away from being a femboy? Is it this guy over here? Who looks like he could have been an extra on fat camp? Where's my, where are my prime physical? This guy looks like, at least like Lobot, this guy's like pretty strong, but he's nowhere near the guy fighting. Like, where's our, where's our prime peak physical condition killers? Bro, give me a, fucking break is it this guy like come on prime physical condition bro you could throw me in this group of people and i would look like the average level of fitness of these guys come on 
Where's the Photoshop of my beach picture? Like prime physical condition? Is it this guy right here with the jeans on? That he's this is like weight training for his water sports? Like he hit a woman? My god. He hit a woman? No, he hit a woman. He hit a woman. He hit a woman. Is it the overweight black kid on the that's filming uh from his camera? Like Uh, from this footage that throughout the entire incident, right up until their friend got stabbed, the crowd of teenagers doesn't seem to be afraid of anything or feel fearful for their lives in any way. And, uh, and they seem to be having a great time. And, and, you know, that makes sense because Moo is much older than they are. And though they wouldn't have known this, he just had quadruple bypass surgery. So he wasn't out looking for, you know, a fight with a bunch of teenagers. Meanwhile, these teenagers are mostly football players in prime physical condition. So they appear to be uh, very much the aggressors as they jeer and taunt the older man and accuse him of, quote, looking for a little girl. And then something happens off camera, an adult woman who came over from another tubing group gets in the man's face. He apparently makes... Sure, the teens have been charged with assault. They definitely hit him and it could have hurt him more of it. Uh, maybe. If nothing else had happened, then, I mean, you could argue that, sure. I don't know if you normally, like, charge people with other crimes relating to stuff like this, if that normally happens. I feel like it doesn't normally happen. Like, if somebody comes up to, like, kill you or you're in a situation and you were, like, smoking marijuana and the cops, like, come and arrest your husband and in the case of the trial, like, there's footage of you smoking marijuana, I don't think they charge you for that normally. I don't know if there's, like, a rule or law or regulation or something, but... Does he? he says prime condition football players. He's referring to Coach Prime of the Colorado Buffaloes, and that team sucks. Did any of the kids in the Rittenhouse case? Did any of those people get charged, like Gross Gortz or whatever? He was the one that pulled the Glock, right? Did any of those people get charged? Some kind of contact with her, and the mob pounces. They push the man and begin hitting him repeatedly after he goes down in the water. And meanwhile, the woman is is hitting him repeatedly. Just to be clear, the guy only got hit one time, right? It was the kid that slapped his face. He only got hit one time. What are the repeated hits? Are we counting when the guy shoved his on the back or whatever? The weakest shove in the history of all of fucking mankind? Is that, I guess if you count that as two hits and we can say hit multiple times. The mob pounces. They push the man and begin hitting him repeatedly after he goes down in the water. And meanwhile, the woman is, is fine. She's not hurt in any way. Only after the man fatally stabs one of his attackers, it's a, a teenager named Isaac Schumann, does the mood start to change? That's not true. The mood doesn't change once he stabs somebody. The mood changes when they realize he has a knife, right? It's te technically different. Like, they were already trying to disengage way before they ever knew that he had a knife. That one guy told the guy, like, get the fuck back. We saw it in the video, but I don't think anybody... Uh... Schumann bled out on the scene. Uh, the man also stabbed several others who were attacking him. And you can tell from watching the video that, they, that you know, he was not chasing them down and, and slicing away, that they were coming at him, attacking him. And that's when he used the knife. Now, based on these facts, within 48 hours, the DA charged Nikolai Mu with first-degree murder. And what's followed nearly two years later is, for the prosecutors anyway, nothing short of a train wreck. You know, there are airtight cases, and there are close cases, and then there's this. Pretty much every prosecution witness has demonstrated very clearly that they're either lying or they're completely unsure of what happened two years ago. And this is such a debacle that very real questions need to be asked about why this case was brought and why these prosecutors still have jobs. Balance of nature, fruits and veggies is the most convenient way to get whole fruits and vegetables every day. They use an advanced cold vacuum process that encapsulates fruits and vegetables into whole food supplements without sacrificing their natural antioxidants. The capsules are completely void of additives, fillers, extracts, synthetics, pesticides, or added sugar. The only thing in balance of nature is fruits and veggie capsules are fruits and veggies. Imagine trying to eat 31 different fruits and vegetables every day. That sounds miserable and time consuming. Well, with balance of nature, there's never been an easier way to ensure that you get your daily dose of fruits and vegetables. Go to balanceofnature.com and use promo code Walsh to get 35% off your first set of fruits and veggies. And an additional $10 off every additional set that you buy. That's balanceofnature.com, promo code Walsh. So wow. I'll start with the incredible testimony of a witness named Larion Davis, who okay. recorded some of the footage of the incident. Okay. Under cross-examination from one of the, of actually one of Kyle Rittenhouse's old lawyers, incidentally, Davis admits that Why are we going by, isn't this a guy that was like in another group that was super far from the whole thing? Or is this the guy that was originally with the, with the first group? He lied to the police. Also... I am so curious. In 23 minutes and 23 seconds, okay? We're going to go through what the witnesses said that might be wrong, which might they might have been. I don't think I watched all the... I don't know if I watched any of the witness testimony. Um, this guy was far away. Okay, so this is the guy that was far away. So it's not even like the important... It's not even the important thing. Do you think he's going to bring up any of the lies that Nikolai told? A single one? Let's find out. Let's see. Uh, why the group was upset with Nikolai Mu. Uh, this is just incredible footage. Watch this. Yeah, wait, this isn't even the guy that was, this isn't the guy that we've seen on camera. This is a guy in another group that was like pretty far away, right? No, it's not the guy that was far away. Wait, this is the guy that was on camera? The one that had the fucking hentai shirt on. 
No, I don't think so. Because I, because I, because I remember I asked why is he wearing this in quarter, blah blah blah. He's like pretty far away. The guy that was actually the one recording though, he wore like a, a button up, didn't he? Deep Futanari. Okay, I am correct. Also said to the police, he came out of the bushes and he was taking pictures of the girls. Yes, I said that. You saw that? No, I said that. I, I understand you said it. Did you see it? Yes. So you saw Mr. Mew with his camera that afternoon taking pictures of little girls. This is the guy recording, right? No. This is not the guy recording the main video footage that we see. No. That's what you're telling this jury. Oh, no, no, no. No, that's what I said. No, I, like I said, I understand you said it. Is it true? Oh, I don't know. Why would you say it if you don't know if it's true? It was a lot going on. Um, okay. Now, it's hard to believe that this is a real interaction between two humans in a courtroom. What? Bro, this guy is evil. <laughs> oh. This wasn't even an important, he wasn't even like an important witness to this case. He wasn't even in the group of kids that this happened to. This is like, why is, is this is who we're cutting out of the, okay, well at least he has the guy that actually took the video footage later on. The one that we're seeing in the main video, but okay. So the lawyer says, you said you saw him taking pictures of little girls. Witness says, yeah, I said that. Lawyer says, did you see it? Witness says, no, I said it. Now, to be clear, we're talking about falsely accusing a man of pedophilia two years after the fact, and then- No, you're not. Falsely accusing a man of pedophilia? It's not, that sounds like you're levying like an official claim. Why are you serious? What a way to load that. Like if I, like how many people have I falsely accused of pedophilia? Oh, and I was like, oh, that guy, he's a fucking pedophile. You accuse this man of pedophilia? That's kind of loaded, but okay. Uh, and the only excuse he can come up with for lying is there was a lot going on. There's a lot going on, so I just accused someone of being a pedophile. That's, you know, it's, 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 it just, just happens, and it's, it, things were hectic. Keep in mind, this is a prosecution witness. So this should be the end of the case right there. I mean, this is, this is the, the clearest possible evidence that the people Mu confronted decided long after the fact. What? This is, he's not even part of the, I bet he, I just realized, he does, this guy, he, he hasn't actually watched anything of this case. Matt Walsh probably doesn't do this research. He's got people that write this out for him. And then he just like reads the fucking teleprompter. That's exactly what's going on. So I shouldn't even get mad at him because he hasn't even done, it's not even his research, it's not even his case. He hasn't done anything for this. There, I mean, this is, this is the, the clearest possible evidence that the people Mu confronted decided long after the fact to come up with a story to justify their aggression towards him. They have no credibility whatsoever. You'll remember in the video, uh, somebody shouted that Mu was looking for a girl but on cross-examination, another witness, Jawan Cockfield, admitted that the claim was not based on any evidence whatsoever. Watch. You told the police that he told you he's looking for a circle. Yes? Yes. Okay. And you then say, grown man can't have sex with little girls. What the hell? What the f***? He's a raper. Right? Uh -huh. Yes? Yes. Okay. You have no information as to what this older man is doing, do you? No. Okay. <clears throat> a raper and saying he can't have sex with little girls. You're doing that to humiliate him, aren't you? Not necessarily. Well, what other reason would you be calling him names when you don't know anything about what's happening? Just trying to figure out the situation. So the way that you're trying to figure out what's happening is by calling a grown man names. Yes? Yes. See, this is why he should have gone with the Nikolai defense and go, oh, I don't remember. I don't remember, actually. I don't remember anything that happened. I don't remember a single thing that happened, actually, except for the things that helped my case. Should have just lied like Nikolai does. Like, Nikolai's been lying for the entire time he's been on the stand, or at least 80% of it. Hmm. I mean, part of the problem here for the prosecution is you have witnesses whose IQs are not much higher than, like, the chairs they're sitting on. Is that, goddamn, this feels like a f***ing dog whistle to me. <sighs> Was this after the two black... It is a dog whistle. I know it is. I'm, I wouldn't give this guy any f charitability. He doesn't deserve any. Whose IQs are not much higher than like the chairs they're sitting on. Uh, so, you know, they just called this man a raper who's interested in little girls as a way of scoping out the situation. You know, that's what they're saying. That, that was their way of gathering intel, apparently. Trying to figure out what's going on. So, you know, when you're trying to figure out what's going on, the best way to do that is just to accuse everyone of being rapists. That's, uh, you know, you, you start with that and then you kind of uh, whittle things down from there. And then elsewhere in the testimony, Cockfield claims to be shocked that the man in response turned around and became upset. Now, none of this he isn't wrong. The reasoning was quite literally retarded. 
the reason the reasoning was retarded yeah of course because they were just being stupid fucking kids right but at least they own it at least they say that they're not lying on the stand for 80 percent of the time like nikolai is because he stabbed five people for no fucking reason at least they're honest about it yeah we i didn't know he was i had no idea i don't know i'm just shouting to see what was going on or whatever yeah it was fucking retarded it was but at least they own it makes any sense and as the trial went on it continued to make no sense for example on cross-examination it was revealed that the dead teenager's best friend, Owen Peliquin, told police on the day of the incident that Moo was looking for a lost phone, not underage girls. Listen to the defense attorney read Owen's prior statement and then watch as Owen tries to weasel out of this admission. Watch. Your answer. We were floating and then we look at him and he was just standing completely by himself with some goggles on. And then we were like, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm looking for a phone. Do you remember providing that answer to that question? Not at all. Is that true? Very true. That happened? No. That didn't happen? I do not remember. You don't remember what happened that day in the river? Well, I remember. So did he or did he not tell you that he was looking for a phone? I don't recall him ever saying that, no. Okay. Is your memory better today or is it better on the day of the incident? I'd say it's better today. It's better today, almost two years later. I feel like, yeah, I've been able to think about it a lot. Okay. Well, in between the time of the incident and today, do you ever reach back out to law enforcement to make any corrections that you might have had? No, I'm pretty young. I wouldn't have known how to do that. Okay. Still one. Sorry for bringing up the Arab Spring. Anyway, please look into the Arab Spring sometime. It can help better understand the region. Okay, gotcha, buddy. Wait, well, I don't even know what this whole line of questioning was about. <sighs> I'm not I'm not going back and watching this shit. No, I'm pretty young. I wouldn't have known how to do that. Okay. Still one. Uh... I mean, you know, if there wasn't a dead person here and someone else's life hanging in the balance, you'd, you'd almost have to laugh at some of this. It, it seems almost like a courtroom, like a very dark courtroom. Going to say something about this kid doing the I don't recall meme that hold on. I'm sorry. You're a permaband. That's that was not that meme. Wait, there is a difference between I don't remember anything from this day versus I don't remember him saying that to me. When you're on the stand for something like this, almost every time. If somebody didn't say something to you, you say like, I don't remember him saying that to me. That means probably not. But you're not going to say no 100% because maybe he did and you forgot, right? There's a difference between saying, I don't recall him saying that to me versus I have no memory recollection of the event. Those are two completely and wildly different things. Typically, when somebody's like, I don't, I don't recall him saying that to me, it's usually interpreted as a no. Room comedy. Uh, just the, the, these witnesses. So two years later, um, Owen's memory is suddenly better. It's better now than it was at the time. He, he remembers more about what happened two years later than he did when it actually happened. And by that he means his memory is worse. Because he can't, he can't, he doesn't remember if his memory is good or not. That's, that's part of the problem. He says his memory is, he doesn't remember, he doesn't remember, he's, he's not sure. He doesn't, he doesn't remember, remember. He said his memory was better two years later than right after the thing though. That seems BS. Yeah, that statement seems dumb, but I, I don't know what it's in reference to. If he, I don't know what, I don't know what Matt Walsh is referencing when he's talking about like police statements or whatever. Like, because in terms of like, if the police ask you like five, minutes after a crazy event like this some shit and then you talk and then you think about it and then like a year or two or even like a month or a couple months later you have like a better understanding of like okay hold on what actually happened or whatever i could believe that but if he had made like a statement to the cops like a week later or whatever and it's like well two years later i know better than a week later that would probably be bullshit but i don't know what the line of questioning was here remembering and now he doesn't recall the guy ever saying anything about missing a phone and he had no way of figuring out how to tell the police any of this because he's just question does the jury need to find a unanimous decision on this yes doesn't recall the guy ever saying anything about missing a phone. And he had no way of figuring out how to tell the police any of this because he's just 19 years old. And 19-year-olds are apparently completely unable to use Google or cell phones or dial 911 or communicate basic ideas at all, evidently. Wait, what? Hold on. He did two years later than he did when it actually happened. And by that, he means his memory is worse. Because he, can't, he, can't, he doesn't remember if his memory is good or not. That's, that's part of the problem. He says his memory is, he doesn't remember, he doesn't remember, he's, he's not sure. He doesn't, he doesn't remember remembering. And now he doesn't recall the guy ever saying anything about missing a phone. And he had no way of figuring out how to tell the police any of this because he's just... Wait, did the guy say for sure? Has there been like 100% validation or confirmation that he did say he was missing a phone? Is there a video of that? Or are there other people testifying that he did say that and this kid would have heard it? Are we just assuming that that for sure happened? Or is he saying that since the guy was like, I don't recall him saying that to me, that he's interpreting that as like, I don't remember at all? 19 years old and 19 year olds are apparently completely unable to use google or cell phones or dial 911 or communicate basic ideas at all evidently 
These are strange lapses in the prosecution's case, to say the least. Also, ironically, when he's like, these guys don't know how to dial 911, blah, blah, blah. if you're making a phone call and you want to talk to the police department, but it's not an emergency, you're not supposed to call 911. Uh, you're supposed to look at the number of your local police department and call them. And usually when you call them, there'll be a little thing that blips and says, if this is an emergency, call 911, otherwise hold or blah, blah, blah. You're not supposed to call 911 for non-emergency reports. But. And uh, it keeps going. So he could have Googled as well. Owen also testifies that he simply can't remember the fact that uh, one of his friends was shouting for the culture to egg on a fight. Watch. I wouldn't say we ever did it just for like a camera, like a video. Well, do you remember him yelling for the culture? Remember that? I do not. You don't remember him yelling that? I don't. Okay. Do you remember somebody in your group yelling or saying to somebody, you got 10 seconds? Remember that? I don't recall that. Did you say that? I did not. Okay. So Mr. Mew moves over to the blonde. Hmm. You agree there's a path to go through? I'm guessing for these specific quotes that other people said these things at some point in one of these videos, or at least people are testifying to it, right? but you want to see this through, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I admit, I'm not as hip as I used to be. Well, I was never hip, let's be honest. I had to look this one up because, uh, because you know, I, I don't know. So I, I went to Urban Dictionary, and you'll find that uh, for the culture is, quote, when you do something you know you usually wouldn't have done and are doing it purely for the hype factor of going against your usual judgment to instead try something new and different. And this is what one of the witnesses was shouting, and we heard that in the video. They were shouting as the mob descended on this 52-year-old man. When you want the best tickets at any sporting event or college. Wait, he didn't play that. I don't even remember hearing that in the video. Did, I'm sure, I guess I'm sure they did if he's saying it. I don't remember this. But so I'm you sure have to act quickly or someone else will get it instead. Similarly, if you're hiring for your business, you want to find the most talented people for your open roles before the competition scoops them up. The best way to do that is with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter helps you find the... It was earlier on in the video. Okay. Qualified candidates and find them fast. And right now, you can try That's for... not what that means. Go back. He screamed it before the pushing happens. Oh, okay and are doing it purely for the hype factor of going against your usual judgment to instead try something new and different. Though this may or not, may not benefit in your favor. Oh, well, it was for the culture. What do you, why did you want me to go back here? What do you have done and are... That thing is more downvoted than upvoted? For the culture. For the culture means doing something because of an additional perceived value of doing that thing. The value can be perceived by yourself, a group of people, or a society as a whole. Doing it for the culture is usually, but not always, something you would normally do, but because the added value of doing it is high, you do it anyway. In order for something to be for the culture, it can't violate bro code or girl code, and it cannot be used as sole justification for getting with a beat chick slash guy. If a beat chick slash guy happens to be the child of your boss you hate, then you can do it for the culture. But the additional perceived value has to outweigh how beat the person is. <laughs> okay. So we went with this one. Okay. Whatever. We're doing it purely for the hype factor of going against your usual judgment to instead try something new and different. And this is what one of the witnesses was shouting, and we heard that in the video. They were shouting as the mob descended on this 52-year-old man. When you want the best tickets at any sporting event... Uh, because... You know, I just want to hear them say that. I'm a child <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yes, yes, yes. yes. From, the, from the concert. Oh, I had no idea what they were saying here. Is this like a Zoomer expression? I just, I didn't even, I just processed this as fucking random shit. From the concert. Who is that? From the concert. Who is that? Who the hell is this? Gotcha. At our concert, you have to act. It's AAVE. A lot of white kids there for AAVE. Quickly, or someone else will get it instead. Similarly, if you're hiring for your business, you want to find the most talented people for your open roles before the competition scoops them up. The best way to do that is with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter helps you find the qualified candidates and find them fast. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's smart technology shows you qualified people for that role. Once you've reviewed your list of qualified candidates, you can swiftly invite your top choices to apply. This streamlined process encourages them to apply sooner, allowing you to fill that role faster. Amp up your hiring performance with ZipRecruiter. And What's the, what was the point of bringing that up? To say that it was like they were all like intentionally doing this to like sacrifice the immigrant for the culture? What was even the point of bringing this up? Find the best talent fast. See why four to five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh and try it for free. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Now, this is the kind of fact that if you're trying to make Nikolai Mew out to be the aggressor, if you're trying to make him out to be this 
uh, uh, dangerous man that was that, that his, these poor teenagers were, were, were so frightened by him. Well, this kind of fact is is pretty inconvenient. The fact that they're all laughing and having a great time and shouting for the culture, not exactly what you would expect if they were terrified for their very lives. So Owen just pretends that he doesn't remember it happening. No, wait. Nobody said they were terrified for their very lives, though. That's not the argument. Is that? I'm sorry. Was that the argument that any of them used? That they were terrified for their lives? Inconvenient. The fact that they're all laughing and having a great time and shouting for the culture. Not exactly what you would expect if they were terrified for their very lives. They don't become terrified for their lives until he stabbed five people and they realize he has a knife out. <laughs> so Owen just pretends that he doesn't remember it happening. Problem solved, according to the prosecutors. These kinds of inconsistencies are continuing to pile up as the trial goes along. But a few facts were definitively established. And one is that, contrary to what some of those teenagers said, Moon never knocked a woman down at any point during this altercation. She was captured on the recording, standing upright, holding her phone. Additionally, Moon never stabbed anyone until he was in the water, surrounded by a mob that was punching him in the face. So, Moon... Some said that they were scared when he ran over, but meh. Were they, did they say they were in fear for their lives? I'm sure they were scared when he fell over. I mean, but that's understandable, right? Some weird old fat dude, like, falls over and starts putting his hands on your fucking inner tube and shit, but fear for their lives? Very lives. So, Owen just pretends that he doesn't remember it happening. Problem solved, according to the prosecutors. These kinds of inconsistencies are continuing to pile up as the trial goes along, but a few facts were definitively established, and one is that, contrary to what some of those teenagers said, Moon never knocked a woman down at any point during this altercation. She was captured on the recording, standing upright, holding her phone. Additionally, Moon never stabbed anyone until he was in the water, surrounded by a mob that was punching him in the face. Punching? So, so Moon waited until his life was in danger before he used deadly force. And what? Okay. Once he began stabbing people, he didn't indiscriminately start swinging. Instead, he only targeted the people who were targeting him, including... People, anybody that was near him. Like, the one kid wasn't... And once he began stabbing people, he didn't indiscriminately start swinging. Instead, he only targeted the people who were targeting him, including Isaac Schumann, who put his hands on Moo's neck. Watch. You watched the video, right? Yes. Okay. So now you're aware that Isaac has his hands around Mr. Moo's throat? I didn't know that he had his hands around his throat, no. You didn't see that? No. Okay. Is that something that you saw? No. That, he was... He was, uh, that was pretty late. That was, I think Isaac was the last one stabbed on video. And so by that time, I was focused on the guy next to me who was, had his whole stomach cut open. Okay, but I guess my point is, initially you say you didn't see Isaac make contact with yeah. him. You see on that video somebody with their hands around Mr. Mew's throat, right? Yeah. Okay. On that video, nobody is stabbed until Mr. Mew is punched in the face and knocked in the water, right? After, yeah. Okay. Damn, they, did they establish punched in the face and knocked in the water? Did he get punched in the face off camera? Is that what they were saying? Also, he's already stabbed people before the hand is on his throat, too, yeah. But also, the guy, when he put his hand on his throat, he was just pushing him. He wasn't choking him, either. That's why the guy has no bruises, or I don't believe, unless it's brought up in there. There's no... And so you would agree that the people that are injured with the knife, that all happens after Mr. B.U. has been knocked in the water, punched, slapped, pushed, right? Yeah. Okay. They said he got punched in the face while he was being pushed as well. Did he have any bruising or anything from that? And you don't, um, you don't attack Mr. Mew, do you? No. Okay. And he doesn't do anything to you, does he? No. Now, it's not an exaggeration to say that the prosecution has not presented a single witness to bolster its claim that this was first degree murder. Instead, every single witness rebutted their argument. But here, for example, is another witness, A.J. Martin, who concedes that ganging up on a man in his 50s and beating him may, in fact, not exactly de-escalate an already tense situation, watch. You're pushing him, correct? Yeah, I, that's where I had said that I thought I'd push him in the front left shoulder to keep him down, but I was there too late, so I didn't get that shoulder. I guess I got the back of it, and... You said you're a peacemaker, right? Do you like to meet... Like, this frame looks so crazy. It literally looks like his face is, like, in the water, as opposed to him being, like, two or three feet. Like, he's almost on his knees here. I'm not even sure if his hands are still in the water at this point. I think they are. His hands are probably in the water, like, pushing up. But, like, it looks like, this looks like he's literally being drowned. <laughs> EDA? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. You could understand how somebody who'd been down in the water and hit two times, getting pushed from behind, may not understand that you're trying to mediate. Okay. Goes to his mindset. Overruled. You keep talking about him fearing for his life. Isn't it enough that he feared bodily harm? I don't believe so. I think you have to fear extreme bodily harm, not just any bodily harm. Answer the question. Sorry, what was the question? Sure. As a, somebody who likes to mediate and was attempting to mediate, 
you can understand how a person in Mr. Mew's position who'd been hit twice in the water might not understand or appreciate your intent to try to de-escalate by pushing him in the behind. I guess. Might misunderstand that, right? He, he could misunderstand that. Sure. But. It's also such a weirdly, like, hack, dishonest, partisan cuck thing to do a report on, like, a court case and only show when one side is asking questions, right? Like, you could theoretically do, oh, well, let's just go to when the uh, prosecution is asking, like, only the prosecution. And let's go ahead and have them ask questions and look at what Nikolai is saying. Let's only show, like, of course, when the defense is asking questions, it's going to look good for the defense. It's the defense. It's their story. Of course, they're asking the questions that present their side the strongest. You're not going to ask questions that incriminate your client. Why the fuck would you do that? Why would you only take clips from one side of a court case? How fucking retarded. You could make literally every single court case in the world look one-sided if you do that. Okay, so uh, so far, thanks to the prosecution. But it's we're at 19 minutes. Maybe now he's going to look at the other side a little bit witnesses, we have established the following facts. Um, most of their witnesses are liars. It was completely reasonable for this 50-year-old man to fear for his life. One of the teenagers had his hand on this man's throat while the others were pummeling him, and that they all lied about him being a pedophile two years after the fact. So, like, what are we doing here? There's, there's no case. This, this, this man should be at home living his life. There's, there's nothing to even talk about. And this is not exactly the kind of case that it takes Perry Mason to win, but, but somehow, once again, things got worse for the prosecution. Yet another witness claimed that the group was afraid of Nikolai Mew, but began to feel a little more secure as other adults began surrounding him as well. So he's presenting this image of a deranged 50-year-old man who's freaking them out. Uh, and then the defense attorney shows a photo of the witnesses looking extremely enthusiastic and not remotely afraid. Watch. Do you see Mr. Mew walking away from your group, moving over toward the blonde person, the woman, right? Yes. Okay. And at that point, are you still scared? Uh, when more people, adults, start to come, I, I felt a little bit more secure. Okay. That's you, right? Yes. Okay. And this is, if you remember, seconds before, you, moments before Madison Cohen, you say you see her punched, right? This is before um, I saw her get punched, yeah. Okay. I mean, again, if, if not for the context, you, you have to laugh at some of that. <laughs> He's claiming that he's fear, fearful for his life, and then you cut to a photo of him looking the happiest he's probably ever been in his life. I mean, this is, that's, that's, the, man, that's the, the, the face of a man, uh, you know, caught on one of those cameras at a Six Flags, uh, uh, you know, roller coaster or something. This, that's not the face of someone who's fear, fearing for their very lives. Um, that is certainly not someone who's, you know, grateful and relieved that other adults have uh, appeared to deal with the threat. And everyone looking at the footage knows that. So this is yet another prosecution witness who is lying overtly on the stand. Everybody knows it. Lying I could go on for another hour dissecting every other aspect of this case and how totally disastrous it's been for the prosecution, but you get the point. In no sane country is this a first-degree murder case. And by the way, uh, there is no duty to retreat in Wisconsin, but even if there were, there was no real chance for this man to get away once the mob descended on him. He literally pulls a knife out and goes back. If he's already pulling the knife out, it should mean he's already fearing for his life, so why is he pulling a knife out to go and re-engage with the group? I don't know. This is a completely unjustifiable prosecution no matter how you look at it. And it was brought for the same reason that most other self-defense claims were brought, which is to terrorize the rest of the population into submission. Remember how the Rittenhouse prosecutor said, everybody takes a beating now and then? Well, we're pretty close to the prosecutors in this case saying the same thing. That's more or less their argument at this point, that the 52-year-old men should just accept their mob beatings rather than defend themselves. You know, if you're getting descended upon by a mob and they're knocking you to the river and beating you and they have their hands around your throat, well, you know, that's just, just deal with it. Just lie there, play dead until they walk away. But that is obviously outrageous. In a sane society, if you harass and assault someone, whatever happens next, whatever violence erupts as a result of your choices is your fault. If you don't want to get shot or stabbed, if you you don't want to bleed to death in a river... Yeah, just as a heads up, that's not how the law works. That is not true. That just because you harass somebody means that you can get fucking killed with impunity. That's not how any country's laws work. Well, maybe. uh, Maybe in the Sharia law system that he would want or whatever. I don't know. But no, and generally in most first world countries, you cannot just kill somebody because you think they're harassing you. That's not how that works. Harassment is not the standard for lethal self-defense. Don't go around trying to bully random strangers just for fun. The reason this case isn't on every mainstream channel is that the mob happened to be white for the most part, though not totally. But this is every bit as serious and coordinated an attack on the right to self-defense as the Rittenhouse case, were, case was and the Zimmerman trial was. The judge should dismiss the charges. The prosecutor should be disbarred. And new prosecutors should consider looking into perjury charges for some of these witnesses who, again, have admitted that they lied. Wait. Perjury? Hold on. I'm sorry. Did I miss something? I'm trying to reach out at the same time. Did they lie to the cops or did they lie to the, um, like during the deposition or did they lie to, 
t t saying a lie or say, call, falsely accusing somebody of being a pedophile like in public like, like oh that's a pedophile that's not perjury did i miss something that he, there might have been one where he said he was being inconsistent with the attorney perjury perjury is is he's saying they lied on the stand and new prosecutors should consider looking into perjury charges for some of these witnesses who again have admitted that they lied and if none of that happens and if somehow the jury convicts then we can say with certainty that just a couple of years after the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, the right of self-defense has been suspended in the state of Wisconsin. Everyone living there should either move or prepare accordingly. My God. And the rest of us should do everything we can to preserve our fundamental rights while we still have them.